Hey, thank you very much, Steve Allen. We are broadcasting live from Dosh Field in Strasburg, North Dakota. To my left hand, it's the one and only Joe Jacobs. Hello, Joe. Hey, hello, everyone. Yeah, that's all right. Last week, I was your right hand, man. Tonight, I'll be your left hand. <laughs> and actually, we're not too far from where we are, were last week. We're actually 10 miles farther south from Linton. And here we are in Strasburg for tonight's Region 3 matchup. Nine-man football added again here for tonight, Joe. Yeah, hopefully we have a good one here, going to shape up here in a little bit. Yes, and of course they're warming up right now as this is actually homecoming tonight for the Strasburg Zeeland Clippers. Tonight's records, Napoleon Gackle Streeter enters with a 3-1 and one record. They're 2-1 and one in the region. And Strasburg Zeeland, their 0-4 record with a 0-3 in the region. So the Clippers trying to look for that first win, Joe, here tonight. Also, take a look here. The region now, let's take a look at the region at a stance. Shiloh Christian is leading the way with a 3-0 region record, 4-0 overall. But they're taking on Linton HMB tonight, Joe. They have a 3-0 region record, 3-1 overall. And that could uh, decide a tilt between the 1-2-3 and maybe even 4 seed here for that game going on in Bismarck tonight. Also, of course, Napoleon Gackle Streeter is number 3 with a 2 and 1 region record, South Border with a 2 and 1 region record, Kidder County 1 and 2 region record, Central McLean also 1 and 2 in the region, Center Staten still looking for that first win and then Strasburg Zealand of course still looking for that first win too. But those spots still wide open, uh, anything can happen since we're officially halfway done with the season, Joe, and it's been a uh, quite an interesting one you would have to say so far in region 3. Yeah, it really has been. There's been uh, some Good games and some really uh, big blowout games, too. So, I mean, it's been a really, really been exciting so far, and uh, hopefully it gets to be a lot closer and very good games. And some of these games we got coming up here in the next weeks have been kind of some rival games. Mm -hmm. So it's going to make them very, very good, very interesting games. Yeah, I think we're officially in the part of the season where all the rivals are playing each other that have been together for years. Even, that, even if they switched regions, those rivals have always stayed together, you know, even if there was a switch how many years ago and they came back. It, it all depends. It's just how the football works for each year in North Dakota. Yep. But now we're going to start with some coaches' interviews as I actually sat down with the head coach for the Strasburg Zealand Clippers, Brian Schumacher, to talk about the upcoming game here tonight on their homecoming night. I'm talking to Brian Schumacher, head coach for the Strasburg Zealand Clippers. Coach, thanks for joining me here for today. Yep, sure, no problem. We are approaching the halfway point of the season already. What has your team done really well for the season, and what does your team need to improve on for the second half of the season? We're a young team. Uh, I guess if anything we've improved on is our, our blocking skills up front, especially at the offense and defensive line. Um, anything we need to improve on is just our intensity, coming out strong at uh, the beginning of every game. Two weeks ago, we played Kira County and had an excellent second half against them. It's just been a uh, last week playing Shiloh, second-rated team in the state. Our kids are kind of deflated before the game even starts. But uh, again, we had a, had a great second half going over some of the base plays that we know and, and getting some confidence against some younger kids. Uh, have a young team and, and basically working on stuff for next year is a our main goal. So your next game is versus Napoleon Gackle Streeter, who had a 42-14 win over Center Staten last week. What's your game plan for this upcoming game? The big thing is I, I've been watching them on film, and they they got two particular offenses. I'm studying their offense and just knowing how to to read their running backs and, and stop them up front. Uh, again, they're going to be a physical team. I plan on changing some things offensively. Might surprise them a little bit. Uh, I want to I want to be ready for for basically doing what we're doing best. I don't want to be one-dimensional where they just key on basically our sweeps, you know, run by uh, A.J. Vandervoorst, but uh, I want to be more multi-dimensional. I got other kids that can run well and do some excellent things, so I'm kind of changing things up there. So what players are you leaning on for this game, and what matchups do you expect to see? Basically leaning more on uh, Nick Newsma. He's one of our receivers, uh, but he can be an excellent blocker, too. Also, Hunter uh, Heisinga. He'll be a, more of a running back role, and I, I'm starting uh, Alex Share as a soft sophomore at uh, doing more with him at quarterback, basically. You know, to get him ready for the next couple of years, especially at, the, at that position. It's homecoming this week. It should be a good week. We're having, having fun in, in Strasburg itself. Just want to say, you know, even though I'm, I have an own 14 I got great kids I, I'm working with. We have good spirits. It's just, just young and just working through the bumps this year, but hopefully... Uh, it's going to come around. Got a great nucleus of junior high kids coming up. I see good things in the future. Well, Joe, as he said, Brian Schumacher, he's trying something different here tonight. And, Joe, I think the main aspect that I've seen is the quarterback position has changed a bit here for tonight. Yeah, it kind of looks like that. They might uh, 
put uh, Alex Share in. We'll yep. see. We'll see how that works out for him. You know, <laughs> sometimes you can surprise that that team and the other team, I should say, and you just never know what's going to happen. Yes, you never know. Well, we're going to take a quick break here, and when we come back in about a minute or so, we'll break down the Napoleon Gecko Streeter Imperials in one minute here on Classic Country AM 600 KSJB. We are back here at Dosh Field in Strasburg, North Dakota. Kyle Dean, Joe Jacobs. We are streaming online, ksjbam.com, and make sure you download our free app, for your phone or tablet on the Google Play or the Apple App Store, just type in KSJB and download it for free. Joe, we were talking a little bit about the Strasburg Zealand Clippers looking for their first win, but now we head towards the Napoleon Gackle Streeter Imperials, in which uh, they've had some tough games already in the early season, and that Shiloh game that I've heard, it was close until about the end of the game. I don't have any stats off it, but from what I talked to, they said uh, it was a close game. So this region could go either way for the top five teams, you could say. Yeah, absolutely. You know, we were just talking about rivalry a little bit ago in some of these little towns here. This is going to be big be between uh, the two as far as who wins and loses because it could be the seeding you get in the playoffs if you can make the playoffs. Yeah, in these games, you never want to count any game, even if the team's 0-4 and, and you may be 3-1. You never know what right. might happen because all of a sudden you're like, oh, okay, we got a good record. Yeah, they, and all of a sudden, oh, my seeding's gone and you're out of the playoffs because of one game. Yep. So you can't take any oppo opponent lightly. I actually sat down with the head coach for the Napoleon Gackle Streeter Imperials, and that was Mr. Kelly McCleary, and he talked about this upcoming game here tonight in Strasburg. Joining me today is Kelly McCleary, head coach for the Napoleon Gackle Streeter Imperials. Coach, thanks for joining me here today. Yep, thanks for having me. Well, we're halfway through the football season season and your team is in the running for the playoffs what has your team done really well this season and what does your team need to improve on for the latter half of the season um, I think we've done a really good job of adjusting to a new offense playing well as a team um, nobody's really concerned about their own stats as you can see I think we have four guys over 200 yards rushing so uh, we don't have that one standout guy this year and it's, I think that helps distribute the ball for us a little bit and mixes things up a little bit um, we can definitely improve on our turnovers I think we've fumbled it too much on the year just a couple small things that'll, that'll get us over the edge. And your next game is versus Strasburg Zealand, who lost versus Shiloh Christian last week, 50-8. to What do you expect to see from the Clippers on Friday then? Um, I think Strasburg always plays us pretty tough. It doesn't, no matter what they have on the year, they're, they're going to give us their best game, and uh, we expect that out of them this week again. So, What players are you leaning on for the upcoming game, and what matchups do you expect to see for Friday night? Like I said, we really don't count on one guy this year a whole lot. Uh, Dalton Django has had a good year for us at quarterback. Um, he's, he'll be back this year. He didn't play, or this week, he didn't play last week. I think he carries our offense for the most part. He distributes it well, and we're just looking forward to getting back out there and playing hard again. And now the Imperials, they actually had a couple seasons where and they didn't make the playoffs, and they got back in last year by defeating Kidder County in an amazing comeback win, which we did that last year, Joe, and uh, they entered just edging into the playoffs because of those good old tiebreakers, and like he was saying, these two teams play tough against each other because, like you said, the rival factor. Yeah, that's right. You know, all it takes is the offense to make a couple extra catches, some nice moves, and, you know, it's anybody's ball game. Yes, it's definitely anybody's ball game here tonight at Dosh Field as we still have a few more moments of the pregame show. Once again, thank you to all of our sponsors to make this broadcast possible here tonight. The last meeting took place on September 18th, 2015, so practically a month from last, uh, uh, excuse me, a year from last year, Strasburg Zealand defeated Napoleon Gackle Streeter in Napoleon 35-12. So uh, quite a different as Strasburg Zealand, of course, made the playoffs also from Region 3 in which they lost uh, versus Thompson last season in the playoffs. So a lot of these players looking here, Napoleon lost John Grunfelder. They lost Jaden Jangula, Alec Mann, and Tyler Moser. And uh, look what Strasburg Zealand lost there, Joe. Yeah, Brody Newsma. Adam Schaefbauer, Derek Keller, Andrew Hullum, Ty Moser, Jacob Eberly, and Riley Ellingson. So they lost quite a few seniors from last year. And a little bit more in numbers, I would say, from Strasburg, Zealand, to Napoleon. And it's, sometimes it's hard when you have that one senior class. Eventually, there's always it seems like they always get another senior class a few years down the road. Yeah, they lost a, a big star quarterback and some really good running backs in that 
group and as as well as some offensive and defensive linemen you know so yeah they they lost quite a bit there's no doubt about that and you know anything can happen here before we take another break here let's take a look at the nine man polls that came out actually on Wednesday ranked number one with 16 first place votes Thompson number two is Shiloh Christian which they're taking on Linton HMB tonight Cavalier is number three with 4-0 record. Number four is North Prairie, undefeated again. Number five, New Salem Glen Allen with a 3-1 record. Others receiving votes, Towner Granville Upham, Richardson Taylor, um, St. John, Richland, and Mont Region. So the polls, there could be a lot of changing going on today because there's actually a lot of high matchups between some undefeated or one-loss teams, which uh, it could change completely next week for the polls. Yes, it could. That's right. Uh, we'll take a look at the Class A poll since we do have a few Class A teams in our region. Laramore's ranked number one with nine first-place votes. Number two is Park River Fordville Lincoln with five first-place votes. Number three is Velva Sawyer, two first-place votes. Number four is Bishop Bryan, which, by the way, Velva Sawyer versus Bishop Bryan is going on tonight in Minot. So it's, uh, excuse me, in Velva. So number three and number four are battling it out in Class A. And number five is Kildare. Others receiving votes, the Langdon area and Munich, Hazen, and Ellendale, Edgley, Cullum, even after they took that loss to number one Laramore last week. And uh, it's been an exciting team, exciting year, I would have to say, in Class A and in class in the nine-man action this year for Joe. And yeah. it, you never know what might be happening because these polls, they could all change next week, like I said. Yeah, did we see it? Was Laramore playing Park River? Uh, oh, oh, oh. Lincoln. You know what? I have it on my schedule here. If I can find it, we'll have to take a look at that. And uh, I believe, I think that's a high matchup going on tonight. But either way, Class A has a lot of good games going on tonight. Yep, Laramore is at Park River, Fordville, Lincoln yeah. tonight in a huge game. So yeah. that uh, region one and two is playing against three and four. So that that whole region could be in a shakeup, you could say, <laughs> or it could stay all the same. Who knows? But once again, we're doing nine man region three action tonight. The full polls and all the scores and all that are all on our website, ksjbam.com. When we come back in about three in about two minutes, let's take a two minute break. Starting lineups, KSJB. We're back here in Strasburg as it looks like they're going to sing the national anthem here very soon. I think that's what you guys are doing. Sing. Okay, yeah, they're going <laughs> to sing the national anthem here very soon as we're actually going to probably get to the starting lineups here in a few moments. Let's start with the Napoleon Gackle Streeter Imperials. I think they're still a little bit away. So, Joe, let's break it down. Let's start with the offense where, number one, a running back, a sophomore, 150 pounds at 5'9", Nathan Weigel. Where, number 12, a quarterback, a senior at 180 at 6'2", Dalton Jangula. Where, number 15, a wide receiver, a sophomore at 170 pounds at 6'1", Jamison Fettig. Number 18, a running back, a junior at 155 pounds at 5'9", that's Jacob Bitts. Number 32, a running back, senior at 170 pounds at 5'10", Jake Bakken. We're number 51 at a tight end, a senior, 190 pounds. That's at 6'2", Bryce Fettig. And we're actually going to get to the rest of the lineup here very shortly. I think they're still going at it. So number 54, a center, a junior, at 180, at 6'1", Pacey Feist. Number 59, a guard, a senior, at 215, at 6'3", Devin Weigel. And we're number 60, a guard, a junior, at 185, and 6'1", height, Luke Hoberg. Head coach Kelly McCleary assisted Joe Cincy. School colors, royal blue, white, and gold. And, Joe, I think we're just going to take a quick break here, Joe, and we'll come back and do the starting lineups for the Strasburg Zealand Clippers here in a few moments on KSG. We are back here Dalton in Strasburg Taylor. for tonight's football game between the Imperials from Napoleon Gecko Streeter and Strasburg Zealand Clippers. Joe Jacobs, let's take it away with the starting lineups for the Clippers now. All right, for the home team here on the scoreboard, the Strasburg Zealand Clippers starting at a quarterback here tonight, a six foot one. 165-pound sophomore, number two tonight, Alex Scher, a running back, a 6'1", 170-pound senior, number eight, Nick Nusma. Another running back, a 5'11", 165-pound senior, number 12, Hunter Heisinga. Wide receiver tonight, a 5'9", 145-pound junior, number 28, Tanner Goble. Running back, a 6'0", 170-pound sophomore, number 32, Alex Vandervorst, a tight end here tonight, a six foot two, 170 pound freshman. Number 34, Coleman Nusma, a guard tonight here, 5'10, 175 pound junior. Number 52, Jay Neptune, the other guard here tonight, is a 5'11, 175 pound sophomore. Number 59, Jordan Pfeiffer, 
and the center, the big guy in the middle. He is a six foot, 195 pound junior, number 69, Adam Hollum. That makes up the starting lineup for the Strasburg Zealand Clippers. They are coached by head coach this year, Brian Schumacher, and assisted by Kyle Anderson, Jacob Klein, and Eddie Kramer. Of course, Brian Schumacher's in his first year as head coach for the Strasburg Zealand Clippers. Kelly McCleary's in his ninth year as a head coach for the Napoleon Gackle Streeter Imperials. As we're getting ready here for tonight's football game action on KSJB. Thank you to our sponsors. We stream online at ksjbam.com. You can download our app for free. Just check it out on the Google Play or the Apple App Store. Just type in KSJB and you can download it for free. I think we're all situated here in the press box at Dosh Field in Strasburg, North Dakota. Kyle Dean, Joe Jacobs for tonight's play-by-play -play action. Should be a good one tonight, nine-man region three. Joe, what do you expect here from tonight's game since this is the main key is rivals, I think. <laughs> I, I expect a good game. I think that's what we always uh, are expecting, and uh, we hope for the best. Yes, that's what we do. Hope for the best for all the players and the parents, of course, and the coaches. So it makes it a lot of fun. And uh, I'm glad we can do this in the good old U.S. of A., right? Yep, that is correct. <laughs> All right, so here we go. It looks like the strasburg Zealand Clippers are going to be kicking it off to the Napoleon Gackle Streeter Imperials. The start things off here for tonight. Let's see here. I did not see who was kicking it since they're in the huddle for the Clippers. Returning in the backfield from what I can see is going to be Jamison Fettig and also Jake Bakken. And that's going to be almost a squib kick picked up there by the Imperials and just going down on his Colton Jangula to start things off the freshman. Yeah, just a, like you said, just a little kick right up the middle, just bounced off the ground and didn't go very far. So that ball will be taken over here. Napoleon Gackle Streeter will start their drive in about their own 44-yard line. They'll be moving from right to left on your radio dial. They're wearing uh, white tops and gold pants with some black lettering. All right, underneath center is Dalton Jangula, the senior on the squad. Has a bunch formation with one wide receiver out to the right, dropping back Jangula, and he's going to almost, he gets sacked right away, Joe, to start things off, a two-yard loss. Yeah, the Clippers were all over and ready for that Josiah one. Savory on the tackle there. That was Josiah Savory on the tackle there for the Clippers, and uh, Jangula takes the snap, kind of rolled out to his right, and there was nothing there in a hurry, so... A loss of about a yard. So it's going to be about second and 12, it looks like, officially on the 45, 46 yard line. Waiting here for the snap underneath centers. Jangula, bunch formation with one wide receiver to the left side. And it's going to be handoff to the right side here to Bakken. And he's going to gain maybe five yards on that carry. Yeah, he took a snap running to his right. He was in motion left to right. And. That was Bakken that ran that all the way to the far side of the field and then cut forward. And before he was finally taken down there by, uh, let's see, Hunter Hake, I believe, made the stop for the Clippers. Third and six near midfield. The Imperials control the ball. Once again, a bunch formation with one wide receiver to the far side of the field. Puts Bakken in motion, hands it off. Right through the middle to Nathan Weigel, and he's going to be getting past that first down marker. It looks like a gain of five yards for a first down for the Imperials. Yeah, just a power move right up the middle. Hand off to Weigel, and he runs it right up and gets that ball right up to about the 45-yard line. This is now in Clippers territory, so a nice little run there for the Imperials. First and 10 from the 45-yard line in Clipper territory tonight in Strasburg. Underneath center, Dalton Jangula, and it's the same formation. Three backs in the backfield with one wide receiver to the far side. He's going to throw to that wide receiver, and it's completed to Jamison Fedek, and he's cutting onto the left side and finally tackled, but he gains 10 yards on that reception. Yeah, nice, nice pass there to a wide open Fedek off the right wing at about the uh, about the 35 yard line then he he ran to his left kind of running across the field and then tried to cut up the middle where he was finally tackled by Nick Peterson for the Clippers and here we go once again same formation with the Fedig on the far side underneath center is going to be Dalton Jangula and they're going to hand it off fumble on the ground picked up by the Clippers to start things off you got to love rival games Joe yeah you do that's Coleman Newsma there that jumped on that ball for the Clippers 
So just a miss, miss play there, miss snap by the Imperials, and the Clippers will now take over, and that ball is going to be about their their own 32-yard line. Looks like that was a fumble on the handoff from what I saw, so that means the Clippers will now start things off at their own 32-yard line, like you said. And here we go. It's going to be shotgun formation with the quarterback. That's going to be Hunter Heizinga once again. Snap high, but they're going to hand it off, and they're going to be tackled right away. I believe that was Vandervorst with the carry, Joe. Yes, that's Alex Vandervorst there running to his left. Didn't really get much there. Uh, actually just barely made it back to the line of scrimmage, and uh, Devin Weigel on the tackle there for the Imperials. Down. All right, so that'll make it second down now. That's going to be no gain on that carry by Vandervorst as the Clippers are lining up to the line of scrimmage here for tonight. Strasburg Zealand looking for the first win here on homecoming tonight. One wide receiver on the near side and far side bunch formation, and that's going to be a quick handoff to Alex Scher. He's just going to take the ball on the snap, trying to roll it out, and that's going to be a loss of one on that carry. Yeah, Scher takes the snap, rolls out to his left, and tried to cut up the middle and just nothing there except a wall of Imperials. So they make the stop there and that ball stays right about the 30 yard line. Still the Clippers in their own territory. 0-0, zero, zero, 840 remaining in your first quarter. Here tonight on KSJB and KSJBAM.com. Kyle Dean, Joe Jacobs here tonight for nine man region three football action at Dosh Field in Strasburg. Once again, underneath center, that's going to be, I believe, Alex Scher once again. And he's going to toss it to the left side to Hunter Heizinga. He has a little bit of running room, and he's going to get swarmed up with a loss of two yards on that carry by Heizinga. Yeah, Heizinga took the pitch out to his left and then had to run all the way to the yeah, far side. It looked like he was going to be able to turn and break up the field, but uh, the Imperials doing a good job just swarming him right up. And he had nothing there but a loss of about two yards on the play. So it'll be Napoleon Gackle Streeter waiting to return the punts. That's Jameson Fedig. Low snap. Punt's pretty good, though. And it's going to be picked up by Fedig at his own 45. Spin move at the 50, and he's trying to plow forward inside Clipper territory. Yeah, that's Jameson Fedig. Catches that ball about the 43-yard line in their own territory, and he'll get it up to about... I believe they're going to place that about the 47-yard line in Clipper territory. So about a oh about an eight-yard return there for Jamison Fedick. So here we go for the Clippers lining up at the line of scrimmage tonight for the homecoming game for the Clippers. Underneath center is Dalton Jangula once again. They fumbled on the last handoff to one of the running backs, and it's going to be a quarterback keeper up the middle, and he's going to get jersey tackled, but not after gaining almost 15 yards, Dalton Jangula. And that's going to be about 15 yards on the quarterback sneak. Down. Yeah, it was Adam Hullum finally bringing him down, but a nice run there, quarterback sneak. It looked like Jangula might even break free there for a little bit as he plowed his way up the middle, but he was grabbed there by Hullum and brought down, but that puts the ball at about the about the 35-yard line for the Imperials. 7.50 remaining, first quarter, 0-0. Jangula is going to be underneath center, player in motion, hands off to Nathan Weigel, and he's going to try to break. No, it's actually a fake handoff to Nathan Weigel, and there's the quarterback keeper. A little sly play there by Dalton Jangula. They gain another first down. Yeah, just fooled us there. It looked like Nathan Weigel took that ball, and, and he got First tackled, down. but it was absolutely Please there. It was Heizinga on the run. 19-yard line. That was about yeah. a give or take a 15-yard line, 15-yard gain or so, I think, Joe. Yeah, about 15 or 16 yards as they'll put it on the – on the 19-yard line, it looks like. Underneath center, once again in the first quarter, 0-0. Dalton Jangula in the red zone with his Imperial crew. Dropping back. Jangula is going to go to the end zone on the far side of Fedig, and that's going to be right through the hands of Fedig. Incomplete. They make it second down and 10 inside the 20. Yeah, that was a nice long pass. Good look there by Jangula. But Fedig, it was the ball just a little yeah. underthrown. So... Fedek actually had to turn around to try to catch that and couldn't quite get his hands on it as it was uh, right right behind him. 
7-10 remaining in your first quarter. 0-0 Region 3 matchup tonight on KSJB. Underneath center, that's going to be Jangula with his crew on the left side, the Fedig. Here we go, waiting for the snap. Player in motion. Fakes, uh, finally tosses it. Actually hands it off right through the middle and uh, swarming. That's Jacob Bits with the carry. The junior on the squad gains Tackle maybe by, uh, one yard. Yeah, about one yard. A good power play there. I believe it was, uh, I think it was Savory there on the tackle for the Clippers, but it just a nice power play there, but not a not a big gain, if anything. Uh, just trying to run it right up the middle for the Imperials. Third and 10, maybe, of give or take, inside the 20 for the Imperials. Underneath center is going to be Jangula. Fedig's on the far side, near side of the field. And they're going to hand it off to the right side to Jake Bakken. That's Jake Bakken running up close to the end zone, and he's going to be brought down right before the goal line. It looks like it's going to be first and goal about the one or two yard line. He yeah, has three Clippers first that, that team up for the down. tackle there. In one fact, uh, Huizenga helping out there as, uh, I believe, free safety in the back there. But Jake Bakken rolls out running to his right and picks up a... A nice gain on the play, about 17 yards. All right, so here we go. First and goal, about the two-yard line or so. Underneath center is Jangula, and uh, we have a new wide receiver on the left side, it looks like, but they're going to just quarterback keeper and punch it in. Sneak. That's quarterback sneak. No touchdown for the Imperials to take a 6-0 lead. That's a two-yard rushing touchdown Imperials by Jangula. Yeah, just keeping that ball running just to his right and right up the middle. Just a nice quarterback sneak move there by the Imperials. And Jangela easily punches it right in for the first six points of the game here. The Imperials lead the Clippers 6-0 to zero with 6.05 remaining in the first quarter. All right, so with that, here we go for a two-point conversion. Jangula is going to be underneath center. It looks like everybody's in a bunch formation. They're going to hand it off to the left side and running on the edge. And gets it with a flag, though. That was actually Jacob Bits, but there's a flag on the play. Two-point conversion is pending. Holding is what the ref says. From what I can tell from, yep, yeah, that holding. It's holding, holding on the offense. Holding on the offense, and that means holding. they're going to repeat the two-point conversion, but it's going to be farther back now. Yeah, that moves the ball back to a roughly, what, about the 10, 12-yard line? Uh, yeah, that's going like to that. move it down inside the uh, Well, it's inside. It should It'd be about the 12-yard line because yeah. they were at the roughly two, three-yard line. So it'll be about the 13-yard line, I should say. So here we go. It's two-point conversion from the 13 now for the Imperials. Try to go up 8-0, and it's going to be a pass, actually kind of a screen pass, completed to Nathan Weigel, and he is going to walk into the end zone. Yes, there we go, and two-point conversion is good on that completion. 8-0, Imperials back in a minute, KSJB. We are back here from Strasburg, North Dakota, 8-0 at the 6.05 mark of the first quarter. Imperials in the lead in this Region 3 matchup. Waiting here for kickoff to go to the Strasburg Zealand Clippers. Heisinga is in the backfield, and he's going to grab it on a couple bounces. He's going to the near side of the field, cuts back close to the edge, and he's going to be brought down around his own 30-yard line from what I can tell, Joe. Yeah, I'd say right about the 30. Heisinga grabbing that ball at about the 20 and then running to his right and trying to cut up the sideline, trying to follow some lead blocking, but uh, he was able to only get to about the 30, and that's exactly where they'll put the ball is on the 30-yard line. So the Clippers will start their drive here from their own 30. Clippers are in negative yards to start out there. Their first series, here we go for the second series, facing the first and 10 from their own 30, down 8-0, under six minutes remaining in your first quarter. Shotgun formation for Hunter Izinga, one back right beside him. Wide receiver to the right, dropping back is Izinga. He's going to get a screen pass completed there to Alex Vandervorst. He cuts back inside, and it's going to be a gain of four yards on that. Yeah, yeah nice rollout second pass there to Vandervorst. Vandervorst grabbing that ball and trying to trying to run to his left and then fake back to his right and then up the middle. And it was uh, Tyler Long making the tackle for the Imperials. 5.30 remaining, first quarter, 8-0. to zero. Imperials in the lead. Shotgun formation for Heisinga. Two wide receivers to the right side of the field. And it's actually going to be a direct snap to the running back to Alex Vanderborst. And he's going to get close to another 5-6 yards. It's going to be third and short now. 
Yeah, nice run there. Vandervorst just grabbing that ball and quickly coming out of there, catching the Imperials a little bit off guard as he runs to his right and gets that ball up to about the uh, 30, 38 yard line. They're going to call it uh, third and two here, so saying about a gain of about three or four yards on that play. So third and two near the 40 in Clipper territory. Underneath center now is Heizinga, two wide re one wide receiver to left, one to the right. Waiting here for the snap. Snap, and it's going to be a quarterback keeper up in the middle, and he's going to get that first down for sure. First down for the Clippers. Sneak. Yeah, just another quarterback Brings sneak two, there. Uh, Gets that ball up across the 40-yard line. And had a, let's see, it was Andy Miller on the tackle there for the Imperials. 4.30 remaining, first quarter, 8-0. Imperials in the lead in this homecoming game for the Strasburg Zealand Clippers. Shotgun formation for Heizinga. Two wide receivers, the left side, I should say far side of the field. Snap, and it's going to be a quarterback keeper, and he's going to trip on the wet grass because, Joe, they said it rained here earlier before we got here. Yes, that it did. Uh, just touching him was Pacey Feist to make sure that uh, Heizinga was down, but going to be a loss of a 10. Yeah, yeah, lost about 10, it looks like. Yeah, big loss there for the Clippers. It looked like Heizinga just trying to roll out to his left and hang on to it and try to beat the pack and goal, but he uh, just slipped on the wet grass. Second and 20 now. The ball on their own 35-yard line for the Clippers. Shotgun for Heizinga. One wide receiver to left and to the right. Shotgun's good, dropping back, Heizinga, he's rolling, he has nowhere to go, but he's just going to keep dodging, and he might throw it finally, and that's completed, a beautiful 15-yard gain there, but completed to Nicholas Newsma, the senior. Yeah, Nick Newsma stepping up, saw that his quarterback was in a little trouble, he stepped up from about the 48-yard line in Imperial territory to the midfield line, right at the 50 marker to grab that ball, letting Heizinga make the complete pass there, so a nice... Nice move there, but they're going to place it at about the 48-yard line here. Still the Clippers in their own territory. And he extended that play with his legs was Heizinga. He's going to be under center now. One back of the backfield, puts a player in motion for the wide receiver on the far side. It's going to be a toss, and he's going to get some room. Nicholas Newsma kit, kicks back in, and he's going to be at the first down marker, but we got a flag on the play. Yeah, we'll see once what that is, but that... Just uh, right up the middle here, running a little bit to his right. Nick Newsma gets a little room, gets that ball across midfield to about the 47-yard line, but we'll have to see what the officials say. It was Nathan Weigel on the tackle for okay. the Imperials. Against it looks the like it's against the Clippers, and uh, they would have got the first down from what I can tell where the ref was sitting, and it's going to be – I did not see – it was a holding call, Joe, I believe. Yeah, I think so. So that's going to repeat third down. But now it's a lot farther down. to go and stand for that five yards on that penalty. Yeah, now it's going to – we'll see where they put the ball back to as the ref is still walking it third back. And <laughs> yeah, third and somewhere is third. right. <laughs> <laughs> third and somewhere is right. That is – it's 316 remaining, 8 to 0. Imperials in the lead, and now it's going to be third and 15 third and again. 15. Yep. That was a 10-yard penalty there, Joe, on that holding call. So here we go. It's going to be shotgun formation on the third and 15. And they're going to drop back as high Zynga. He's going to try to extend the play with his legs again. He's just dodging left and right. He finally throws it up, intercepted easily by the Imperials. And it was almost like he was only wide receiver there. That's Nathan Weigel with the interception turnover. Yeah, Heizinga just in a little trouble there. Uh, I think he kind of got his view blocked. He wasn't able to get that ball out far enough. And uh, Nathan Weigel just uh, picks that one right off and uh, gets it up to about, see the ball will be at about the 30-yard line here. So the Imperials in Clipper territory here with 2.58 to go in the first quarter, 8-0. to zero. Imperials lead the Clippers. Here we go with underneath center. It's going to be Dalton Jangula on a first and 10 inside the 30. And it's going to be handoff. Guess who? It's going to be Nathan Weigel. And he's trying to run, and he gets a touchdown, a 29-yard touchdown run Nathan by number Weigel one, on Nathan Weigel. Yeah, Weigel just like powers his way through the line of scrimmage. And once he did, he breaks free. 
The only chance the Clippers had was Huizinga in the back. That free safety couldn't quite make the tackle at the goal line there as Nathan Weigel walks it in. Now with just eight seconds off the clock there on that play, 29 yards. Makes it 14-0 Imperials. All right, so here we go for the two-point conversion for the Imperials. And player in motion, and they're going to, looks like, hand it off to the fullback. And he got it in. Uh, I didn't see who it was. Looks like number 32 got it in. That's going to be uh, Jake Bakken. So we're going to take a minute break. 16-0 back in a minute, KSJB. We're back here at Dosh Field in Strasburg, North Dakota. 16-0 Imperials right now that are leading the Strasburg Zealand Clippers in Strasburg. Waiting here for the kickoff now. And there it is, and it's going to do a nice bounce. Picked up by Huizinga near his own 10-yard line. He's going to cut back in and out, and Jersey tackle there inside the 20. Not a good starting position for the Clippers. Yeah, Huizinga didn't have much of a chance there as I think he picked up that ball. He had a pretty well four Imperial jerseys surrounding him, and he was only able to get a few yards out of that. So they'll start pretty deep in their own territory at about just inside the 20-yard line here. It could be about the 16-yard line or 17-yard line from what I can see on the far side of the field. We are streaming online, ksjbam.com, for tonight's nine-man Region 3 football game. Clippers control the ball now. They're down 16-0 first quarter. Shotgun, Huizinga. They're actually going to hand it off with a beautiful handoff and a nice run there by Alex Vandervorst. Looks like he's going to only gain roughly a couple of yards or so with so many cutbacks he did. Horse. Yeah, he grabbed that ball, cut to his left, he's back to his right, and then looked like he was going to have a little room and uh, really didn't as he was tripped up there by Jacob Bitts for the Imperials. Yeah, it looks like it's only about one or two yard gain to make it second and long here for this next play for the Clippers. They're wearing their purple uniforms with an SZ in the gold on their helmet. Shotgun formation, Huizinga, there's the snap, dropping back, he's going to pass it, and it's going to be completed on the nice seam on the far side of the field, and that's going to be Nicholas Newsma with a completion of eight yeah. yards, first down. Yeah, oh. they're going to move the chains on that play, just rolling out to his right, Huizinga that time, uh, Nick Newsma making the complete pass, or the connection there, and it was Jacob Bitts. Again, on the stop for the Imperials. Passing has been working pretty well here so far for the Clippers, even after that one interception. Waiting here for Huizinga with the shotgun formation. Two wide receivers far side of the field. They're going to throw it, and once again goes to Newsma. Beautiful catch. He gains five yards on that completion. Looks like passing is the game tonight, Joe. Yeah, right now it is. This is going to be Jamison Fedig on the stop that time, but uh, not before rolling out to his left. And uh, Fedek doing a nice, four. or rather, Huizinga doing a nice job rolling out there and and hitting his man there, Nick Nusma again. 118 remaining, first quarter, 16-0 Imperials, second and four. The ball is on the 36-yard line in Clipper territory. Huizinga shotgun formation, see if they continue the passing. They will. And he's under pressure. That's a screen, but it's going to be read very easily there. Completion to Alex Vandervorst. They're going to lose two yards on that completion. Yeah, Jacob Bitts doing a nice job reading that on the defense as, as uh, they he's went the nowhere on that play. Vandervorst got, got the ball, and he was uh, pretty well Six. sacked right there. Uh, good read there by Jacob Bitts and the Imperials. 40 seconds remaining, first quarter, 16-0. Napoleon Gackle Streeter in the lead. Clippers control the ball, facing a third and long inside their own territory. Right inside their own 35, Huizinga, shotgun. Expect another pass here with two wide receivers near side of the field. Dropping back, there you, nice bullet pass, but it went right into the hands of an interception. That is Steven Schumacher, the senior and he's going to bring it all the way back inside the Strasburg Zealand 20 yard line. That passed just a little too far ahead of, of Nick Newsma there by Huizinga, and it went right through his hands, but right into the hands, like Kyle said, into Steven Schumacher's hands. He grabbed it, and he did a nice job running that back as he caught that ball about the 35 yard line. He runs it all the way up to about the 20. So the Imperials with the ball on the Clippers 20 yard line. 12 seconds remaining in the first quarter. 
Let's see what the Imperials do on their one play in the first quarter. Dropping back, rolling out to right side. And it's going to be Jangula, and he's going to gain roughly five yards with 6.9 seconds remaining. He went out of bounds, so the clock stops. Yeah, he stopped the clock there, just running it all the way, rolling out to his right, looking for somebody downfield. Nothing there. Ran all yeah, the way to the far yard. side. And uh, finally it goes... He goes out of bounds, but just a uh, short gain on that play, I guess. Yeah, it looks like it was uh, far side from this distance. It looks like it was a couple yards, but it was only about one yard gain or so. Underneath center is Jangula with 6.9 seconds remaining. And this time they're going to hand it off and falls forward is Nathan Weigel. And that's going to do it. The end of the quarter. 16-0 Imperials oh, facing up third and 10 are the Imperials when we come back in one minute. KSJB. 16-0. Napoleon Gekko Streeter is in the lead over the Strasburg Zeeland Clippers, and it's going to be third and long inside the Clipper 20 yard line for the Imperials. And Joe, uh, we had actually had two plays at the end of the first quarter since he ran out of bounds to so make it third and long. Yeah, made it interesting that uh, they stopped the clock, really. All right, so here we go underneath center. It's going to be Jangula going left to right on your radio dial. Player in motion, that's going to be Jacob Bits. Hand off to the fullback onto the right side, cuts back inside, and finally tackled inside the 10-yard line is Jake Bakken with the carry. And that's going to be roughly uh, 10, uh, about a 15-yard gain. Yeah, nice run there by Bakken as he hands it off, runs to his right a little bit and straight up the middle as he's finally brought down by the Clippers just inside that 10-yard line. We're in the second quarter, just started, 16-0 Imperials. Imperials are driving on a first and goal inside the 10. Underneath center is going to be Jangula again. Player in motion, hand off to the player in motion, Jacob Bits. Bits cuts back inside, and he's going to get close to the goal line. Looks like he was just out of it, so it's going to be second and goal at the one. On the carry. So Jacob Bits on the carry there, pitched out to his left, yeah, runs left, yeah, runs across the field, and then cuts inward left. and tries to get up there, but gains about five yards. So they put the ball on the one-yard line here. Second and goal from the one. Once again, Kelly McCleary said he had three rushers that were over how many yards? They're all pretty much even, and it looks like they're going to run it in with the quarterback keeper for the touchdown for the Imperials. That's a one-yard touchdown run for That's Dalton bad. Jangula. Yeah, just great. another sneaky quarterback sneak there. Uh, Dalton Jangula just hangs on to it and dives his way right across that goal line, putting the score now to 22-0 to zero in favor of the Napoleon Gackle Streeter Imperials over the Strasburg Zeeland Clippers here on the Clippers' home field. 10.53 to go here in the second quarter. Waiting here for the two-point conversion. Underneath center is Jangula after scoring a couple touchdowns rushing, and he's going to do a quarterback keeper. Look at that beautiful wide open field, but he's going to try to plow forward, and I did not see no good. They said no good for the two-point conversion. 22-0 Imperials back in a minute, KSJB. We're back here at Dosh Field in Strasburg, North Dakota. Kyle Dean, Joe Jacobs, 22-0. Napoleon Gackle Street are in the lead over Strasburg, Zeeland. Waiting for the kickoff. Strasburg, Zeeland will be going right to left on your radio dial. That's going to be officially picked up by one of the Clippers, and it's going to be around the 34-yard line and where the Clippers are going to start. Clippers bring it out. That was going to be Jordan, Jordan Huizenga on the, on the receiving there. As the ball kind of rolled up to him, he grabbed it, and I think the ball is still a little slippery from the grass as he dropped it but picked it back up and kind of had to dive on it. And luckily saving it here for the Clippers as they'll start their drive here at about the 34-yard line in their own territory. 10.49 remaining, two wide receivers near side of the field, and I think we got a false start or a timeout. I think we had a timeout before anything happened. Timeout for the Imperials because he didn't see, he, he saw is. something he didn't really like. Time Back out. in uh, one minute, KSJB. 22-0 here in Strasburg. Napoleon Gackle Street are in the lead, shotgun. And it's gonna be handoff with a quick sidestep move by Alex Vandervorst. And he's gonna gain roughly Van eight yards. What a beautiful quick run there by Vandervorst. Van yeah, Vandervorst doing a nice job. He was almost wrapped up at the line of scrimmage, breaks us. Breaks a tackle, nice Brings spin move, powers his way up, gets that ball to about the 42-yard line. So this is the Clippers here, still in their own territory, but 
Starting to make a drive here. It'll be second and two now for the Clippers. 10-23 remaining second quarter tonight in Doshfield in Strasburg, North Dakota. Underneath center, Hunter Izinga, one back of the backfield, two wide receivers near side of the field. Waiting here, snap, and a quarterback keeper, and trying to just plow forward for the first down. I think he got it was Izinga with a good, maybe a three-yard gain on that. Yeah, Izinga just puts his helmet down. Quarterback keeper there, and uh, plows his way up and is going to move the chains. That ball is going to be put right on the 45-yard line. So a nice uh, power play. Got to give credit to Heizinga there for hanging on to that ball and just powering his way forward. Under 10 minutes to go here in the second quarter, 22-0. Clippers trying to look for the first win and the first score here for tonight. Shotgun dropping back, and that pass was way too low for the intended receiver. Uh, that was a Tanner uh, it's Goble for that, for the intended pass, receive. <laughs> yeah, Goble out on the right wing, spin moves and tries to get to that ball, but just a little un under thrown there by Heizinga as he's not able to even quite get his hands on it as thrown just behind him. So incomplete pass there to Tanner Goble. Second and 10 from the 45-yard line in Clipper territory. Shotgun, Clippers, Heizinga. Two wide receivers to left, two to the right, puts the player into motion, dropping back for a pass, and he's going to go for a pass, and right over the hands of the intended receiver, and that yes. was Coleman Nuzma. Yeah, Nuzma there, just the intended receiver, but had to kind of jump, the ball just a little overthrown, so the last one a little underthrown, this one a little overthrown, and Nuzma not quite able to get a hand on that ball at all, so that'll repeat It'll, it'll bring up third down and long here for the Clippers. 9.40 remaining. Second quarter, 22-0. Strasburg trying to get that first score. They're facing a third and 10 on their own 45. Shotgun formation for Heisinga. Two wide receivers on the far side of the field. And we got a flag, it looks like, encroachment. A good hard snap count by the Clippers. Yeah, it'll be an offside Outside. They're a bit of a five-yard penalty, so that'll move the ball right to midfield, right to the 50-yard line here, as that's the second penalty that I have on the Imperials. So that'll make it third and a manageable five instead of third and ten. Good, smart play there. They tried to get him off guard, and they did, and went over the line of scrimmage. Shotgun formation once again for Heizinga. Two wide receivers far side. Snap, and they're going to hand it off. Quick sidestep move. My goodness, Vanderforce has got the sidestep moves. Again, seven yards. Yeah, nice back and forth sidestep, like you said. Uh, getting that ball up the middle, and uh, nice job there by Vanderforce. is finally brought down by uh, Drew Weigel and Jake Bakken for the Imperials. Yeah, he's got some good moves as that Vandervorst, and he's in the backfield once again. Shotgun for Heizinga. Two wide receivers to the right side. Same formation. See what's going to happen with the first and 10. And there's Vandervorst. My goodness, he's got some quick feet. <laughs> he just goes right through, pins the needle through the, through the haystack, I guess you could say. <laughs> yeah, he rolled out, grabbed the snap. Is Vandervorst running to his right and then cutting up the middle, powering his way across the 40. So he's going to get that up to about the 39-yard line. It would be a gain of about four yards on the play and bring up second and six here for the Clippers. 8.50 remaining in your second quarter, 22-0 Imperials. And those Clippers still trying to look for their first score. Coleman Nuzma is going to come out here, take a little breather. As the uh, play clock is running, so the Clippers have to uh, do a little rush now. Shotgun formation, once again, same formation with two wide receivers on the far side. Snap, handoff, and there's Vandervorst again. He's given some good running room, but that only gains about three yards. Still a manageable third and short. Yeah, Devin Weigel there on the stop for the Imperials, but a nice cut up the middle and powering his way through is Vandervorst, but... Like you said, he'll bring it up to about the 35-yard uh, line for the Clippers. Third and three in Imperial territory. Let's see what the play call is since we've had a good run here by Vandervorst for the last series. Shotgun waiting here, and that's a low snap. Going to go straight to Vandervorst, but he is uh, almost getting tackled, eventually swarmed on the snap, and that'll make it a fourth and long now. 
And it's just a mishap botched snap. Yeah, Andrew Miller and the and the whole defensive line came through there when uh, Vandervorst dropped that one, or it was a low snap. He couldn't really grab it, so uh, misplay there, but the Imperials' defense to make the stop in a hurry. They're going to go for it on fourth down, about fourth and eight. Shotgun formation here for Heisinga. Two wide receivers far side, fourth and eight. Snap is good, dropping back. Heisinga's going to run for it. Lots of room in the field. He's going to easily get that first down. Oh, it's going to be very close, though. Nope, it looks like the ref said it's officially past the first down marker. Yeah, Heisinga backed up looking. Nothing really happening down low, and he stepped in out of that pocket up in front, and, and he was able to run to his right, and he will move the chains as he'll bring that ball all the way up to about the 32-yard line here in uh, Imperial Territory. Seven minutes remaining, and we have a timeout on the field. I think it's a timeout for the Clippers. So maybe looks like it wasn't a timeout. It was an official timeout there, I think, to get something set. So here we go. It's going to be back for the Clippers. Shotgun. Vandervorst in the backfield, but this time it's direct snap. The high Zinga, the quarterback. What a sidestep move. He's They're eating the grass there with the Imperials on that quick cleat forward. Yeah, I think the Imperials have a player down here, but Heizinga took the snap there, Very and he down. runs to his left Good. and then stopped, sidestep back to his right, and he's able to plow his way up across the 30 to about the 26 or so yard line. It's going to be about second and four, but we have an Imperial down, and what number is that there, Joe? I can't see. Uh, he's holding his knee, his right knee. Yeah, I'm not able, unfortunately, to see the number here. We'll let you know as soon as we can. All right, so we'll take a quick break here. It says 22-0. Clippers are driving back in 30 seconds, KSJB. We're back here on AM600 KSJB. As we are waiting here, one of the Imperials is still down. It looks like it's on his knee. Can't see who the player is yet. It looks like number... Uh, Luke Holberg, I believe this is. That's a junior guard at 185 and 6'1", and it's going to be his right knee. It looks like he can't even really put so much pressure on it. And that's not good for that, for the Imperials. Jake Bakken and Jamison Fedick helping him off the field here as, as Luke Holberg not putting any pressure on that right uh, leg and is basically holding his knee when he was down here on the field. So hopefully he's okay. Yeah, we're going to, he's very, he's limping off here very slowly. He hasn't put any pressure on it, on that leg. So we'll see what that has the impact. But right now the Clippers have been putting a good series together, Joe, here tonight. Yeah, they were actually uh, between Vandervorst and Heizinga. They're, they're kind of shaking it up a little bit. I think they're kind of uh, got the Imperials guessing a little bit at who's going to get that snap. And that's kind of what they need to do to get something rolling for them. And their two chess pieces are in the backfield right next to each other in shotgun formation. So uh, that's been the factor, I think, so far as those two. For tonight is Hunter Izinga and Vandervorst, Alex Vandervorst. Yeah, they both are two guys that can stay on their feet pretty well. Uh, we see uh, some quick foot action. All right, here we go. 6.49 remaining, second quarter, snap. And they're going to hand it off once again to Vandervorst. And that time he's not going to go anywhere. He's going to lose one yard to make it third and five. Yeah, just trying to get a run it up the middle. It's going to be Andrew Miller on the stop there on that defensive line for the Imperials, but uh, just a quick handoff. That was a snap into Heizinga's hand, and then it was going to be handed off to Vandervorst, who runs up the middle, but just not much happening there. No, here we go at a third and five inside the Imperial 30-yard line. Shotgun formation, two wide receivers near side of the football field. Snap, shotgun, fakes the handoff. It's quarterback keeper runs right through the defenders. Look at that running room. For Heizinga, and he's going to gain definitely that first down. A good, almost a 10-yard scamper. Yeah, it's going to be close to about 10 yards, like you said, Kyle. It was just Heizinga rolling out to his right and found some room on the far side of the field, and, and he ran it all the way out of bounds. Six minutes remaining here in the second quarter 22-0 Imperials but the Clippers have been driving very well they started this drive at the 10:49 mark waiting here for shotgun two wide receivers near side of the field 
And they're going to hand it off. Vandervoorst in. He's going to run into one of the tacklers, but he's still going to gain roughly three yards to make it second and about seven. Yeah. Uh, it looks like only about one yard. My bad. Okay. <laughs> uh, one <laughs> yard there for Vandervoorst before he's tackled by Jacob Bitts for the Imperials, but it was Vandervoorst just running off to his right a little bit. Looked like he had a little room at the line of scrimmage, but, boy, it closed up in a hurry. Good job by Jacob Bitts there and the Imperials. 5.30 remaining, clock running, seconds and about nine inside the 20. Red zone for the Clippers. Shotgun, two wide receivers, far side, and that's going to be handoff Vandervoorst. No, it's actually quarterback keeper. you got to love those trick plays, but it's going to be a jersey tackle. And that's going to be a loss of four yards. Yeah, it looked like it was going to Vandervoorst, but then it was actually Heisinga that took the snap and kept it and rolls to his left. And it was going to be Jake Bakken that made the stop for the Imperials and about a four-yard loss there. They'll place the ball about the 23-yard uh, line roughly here for the Clippers. 4.46 remaining, second quarter, 22-0 in favor for the Imperials. Clippers control the ball, facing a third and roughly 13 around the 20-yard line. Shotgun formation, two wide receivers to the right. There's the snap, dropping back is Heisinga. He fakes it, and now he goes right through the middle, wide open, and right through the hands of the intended receiver. I think that was Tanner Goble with that, trying to get that reception. Is that Joe? I'm not I can't sure. I see. think so. I, I believe that. Yeah, that yeah. looks like number 28, yeah. Tanner, uh, Tanner Goble. Goble. Yeah, yep. boy, he turned around. He had some room there, just not able to hang on to it. But, wow, nice pass there by Heisinga. That one was wide open. That right would have been a touchdown. Middle. Yeah, that <laughs> would have been guaranteed a touchdown. They're going to go for it on fourth and long. What a beauty of a pass that was, though. And here we go, dropping back. See what's going to happen. That one's going to go way on the far side and... Looks like that. No, there was supposed to be a receiver there, but nothing happened. Turnover on downs on that pass. So over. the Clippers' drive stalls out, and it's unfortunate. They they moved that ball slowly but surely for quite a while there, Kyle. The, uh, they took up almost six and a half minutes in that possession. So kind of a wasted effort on that part on the First turnover on downs. On but still, 22-0, they can move the ball now that they noticed. Yeah. So Imperial starting at 422 remaining, second quarter up 22-0. That ball is going to be on their own 22-yard line. Waiting here for the Imperials to start things off, and that's going to be a carry by one of the running backs, but couldn't go anywhere, it looks like. Yeah, he was stopped at the line of scrimmage. I believe it's Nathan Weigel as they help him up. Yes, it was Weigel there on the, uh, on the handoff, but just nothing there in the middle except for Adam Hollum for the defensive stop on the Clippers. 3.55 remaining, clock running 22-0. Imperials are up. Second and roughly 10. Underneath center is going to be Dalton Jangula, and he's going to drop back for a pass. That's a over-the-shoulder pass and a quick move by Nathan Weigel, and he's going to get swarmed by the Clippers, but not after gaining six yards. Fumble, fumble, we got a fumble. Like we'll see what happens. It's going to be picked up by the Imperials, but still a six-yard gain after that fumble recovery by the Imperials. Yeah, Jay Neptune there on the tackle for the Clippers, uh, and uh, that was a short little pass out there to Weigel to his left. Jangela quickly getting rid of that one. It's going to be roughly third and eight, or excuse me, third and two. That was an eight-yard gain. Underneath center is going to be Jangela, bunch formation. And they are going to do a quarterback keeper, the Jangula. He's going to get that first down, a five-yard gain by Jangula. Yeah, Jangula just that hanging on to that one, jumping his way across that line of scrimmage and gaining the, uh, a few extra yards. So that, that brings that ball up to about the 36-yard line here with 2.58 to go here in the first quarter, or second quarter, rather. First half. First half, yeah. There you go. Jangula is underneath center. Bunch formation again. Waiting here for the snap. Hand off, left side, and swallowed up is Jacob Bitts. That's a loss of five yards on that carry. Yeah, that was going to be uh, Vandervorst on the tackle. 
But uh, loss of yardage there by Jacob yeah, Bitts rolling out to his left, taking the, the handoff yardage. there. And uh, just nothing happening Three there. So that puts the ball 14. back to about the 34-yard line. 228 remaining before halftime. 22-0. Imperials are driving now. Waiting here for the next snap with that bunch formation underneath center. J Dalton Jangula. They have a 3 and 1 record. Trying to improve it. And it's quarterback keeper with runners right in front of him. But he's going to get swarmed right away by the quick Strasburg Zealand Clipper defense. Wow, their defense is pretty good for the Clippers here in this series. Yeah, Hunter Hake on the takedown there. <laughs> or Vandervorst, rather, I should say. That was. And uh, Hake, I believe, combined for that tackle. As just. Jangla trying to roll out to his right and then cut up the middle as there was nothing happening there but really no gain on that play. Second and long, excuse me, third and long, about third and 14 at their own 35 yard line for the Imperials. 135 remaining up 22-0. Underneath center is going to be Jangla in the backfield is going to be Nathan Weigel. There's the snap, dropping back is Jangula, and he's going to get swarmed, but he breaks free through the pocket. What a hit there by one of the Clippers. My goodness, who got that tackle there? That was Jay Neptune that made the, the hit, but it was actually Hunter Hake that made the initial stop by the feet, and then that was a nice uh, tackle there Hake by Jay Neptune. Neptune and the... Uh, he was pumped Clipper up after stop. that. <laughs> yes, he was. Wow. All right, so it looks like we have the punt team out. We're actually going to have a timeout for the Clippers. One minute remaining, 22-0. Second quarter back here in one minute, KSJB. One minute remaining in your second quarter, 22-0 Imperials, and Imperials are going to punt, which is dangerous because in the backfield is Izinga. But no, they're going to actually go for it on the fourth and 15. Dropping back over, here's Hunter Izinga. He's, excuse me, he's just going to throw it and up in the air, and incomplete there by Dalton Jangula was that throw. And that was a fourth down, a risky fourth down. Now look where, where the Clippers are starting, Joe. Yeah, that pass, I believe, was intended for Jameson Fedick, and Fedick is just over his head. Nick Peterson on the coverage there for the Clippers, but now the Clippers will have the ball on the Imperials 35 yard line. So with 53 seconds to go, maybe they can get some points on the board before the half. That was a risky call there by Coach McCleary. And uh, here we go. Strasburg Zealand's turn. They were moving the ball last time. It's gonna be spread offense. Two wide receivers to left, two to the right. Shotgun formation. Player in motion from right to left. Dropping back for a pass. It's gonna go do a bullet pass. Intercepted right into the hands of Hunter, excuse me, that's going to be back here to Drew Weigel. Drew Weigel on that interception. Yeah, running that back on the left side. Caught that ball at about the 30-yard line. Going to run that one back over to about the, uh, oh, that ball is going to be placed here, let's see, right about the 45-yard line. So a nice, uh, nice run back there for the Imperials. That is, I believe, second interception tonight. I believe from the Clippers that I got. All right, so here we go. The Imperials control the football. And they're going to hand it off in a, a sidestep. They're almost tripped. Jake Bakken, and he's going to finally trip on that wet grass. He's going to gain six yards, though. Yeah, Bakken just rolling out to his right, taking the handoff, bringing it up around and trying to cut forward right about the 50 yard line and uh, just slipped on the grass. But they're gonna place the ball here at about the 48 yard line. So the Imperials with it now. We have a timeout called, Kyle. 22-0 in favor for the Imperials back in 30, KSJB. 22-0 here at Doshfield in Strasburg, North Dakota. Imperials are in the lead over the Clippers after that interception by the Imperials and the Imperials are facing a second and short at midfield. As we are waiting here to make sure everything's good to go, and here we go with 31 seconds remaining before halftime. Underneath center, that's gonna be Dalton Jangula, and he's gonna do a quarterback keeper. Runs through on the right side, has running room, gets the first down inside the 40 yard line in Clipper territory. Yeah, Dalton Jangula just rolling out to his left and then taking some nice Getting some nice blocks by his offensive line there as he's going to power his way up across the 40 
and a hurry up offense here as there's 20 seconds left to play. 20 seconds, here we go. Underneath center, Jangula dropping back. He's gonna go for a pass, rolling out to the left, and he's gonna air it up there, beautiful pass, and it's gonna be batted down by one of the Clippers. Yeah, Alec Vandervoorst gets his hand on that one. A nice job defensively, because that ball, I believe, would have been right in the hands of Jamison Fedick. And unfortunately for Fedick, he was ready to catch that ball as it was just tapped out of bounds there. Knocked away right at the goal line. 11 seconds remaining, 22-0 in favor for the Imperials. And they're going to have one last play, I believe, to try to get that touchdown. Because once it hits 30-0, that means the mercy rule takes effect in the running clock in the second half. Underneath center is going to be Jangula. Two wide receivers lined up. On top of each other, dropping back for a pass. Jangula, he's under pressure, and he're gonna, he's trying to get out of pressure, and he finally throws it up into the end zone, going towards Fedek. Did he get that? No, nope, batted away by Heizinga. We have .9 seconds remaining. It's gonna be second and 10, I believe. Third and 10, excuse me. So one more play for the Imperials to try another Hail Mary. Yeah, again, that was Jamison Fedek on the receiving end of that, right about the goal line again. Jangla in a lot of trouble, but able to get that pass off, but uh, just batted away by uh, Hunter Heizinga down at the uh, goal line. Jangla's um, passes have been very, uh, pretty accurate. Just they've been getting down to the field is just trying to get it to the receiver. We'll see what's going to happen with .9 seconds remaining before halftime, 22-0. Facing a third and ten. As we're waiting here for something, Joe. I just don't know what. I'm not sure. Everybody's just standing out there looking at each other. Literally. Huh. Even the refs are. Yeah. I can't see anything on the field why they would not. Oh, oh there, there it is. is. Here comes the ball. That ball bounced. Into the forest? Yeah, apparently. <laughs> I think uh, there is a shelter belt of trees right behind the or uh, crow's nest, and uh, pretty much, I think, when it hit the goal line, it must have bounced out into the... For the forest. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I just don't know what happened there. Everybody was staring at each other like, okay. <laughs> I guess there was no football by the center. Yeah. All right, so here we go. Underneath center is going to be Jangula. One last Hail Mary attempt. Dropping back, Jangula. He's going to step up in the pocket, and he's just going to run it himself, and it's fumbled! <laughs> Picked up by the Clippers, and that's going to do it, though. 22-0 at your half. Napoleon Gackle Streeter in the lead. 22-0 over Strasburg Zeeland back in three minutes for the halftime show on KSJB. We are back here on KSJB. They're doing the homecoming courts right now here in Strasburg for tonight, so we're going to get that here very shortly. Let's get going here for some of the stats for this game here. As I'm going to actually turn on my flashlight so I can see on the in the press box here. I know, Joe, right? Yeah, you're, doing the, you're doing the calculator thing, so. <clears throat> yeah. All right, well, right now the score is 22-0 in favor for Napoleon Gackle Streeter. The first possession for the Imperials was actually a fumble. Strasburg Zealand recovered, had the punted away. Napoleon Gackle Streeter got their first touchdown. It was actually a two yard touchdown run by the quarterback, Dalton Jangila. Two point conversion was good to make it 8 0 Imperials. Strasburg Zealand then was intercepted by Weigel. Napoleon Gackle Streeter then scored on that with a one, with a, excuse me, 29 yard touchdown run for Nathan Weigel. Two point for conver conversion good, 16 0. Imperials. Interception by the Clippers once again before the end of the first quarter. Napoleon Gackle Streeter capitalizes. That's a one yard run by the quarterback, Dalton Jangula. Two point conversion, no good. 22 0 Imperials. After that, the Clippers did drive a little bit, but it wasn't enough. And after a couple interceptions, fumbles, few turnovers, it's still 22 0 in favor for the Napoleon Gackle Streeter Imperials. We'll take another quick break. When we come back in a few moments, we'll continue the halftime show, KSJB. Caldine Joe Jacobs here in Strasbourg for tonight. 22-0 in favor for the Imperials. Joe Jacobs has some of the stats for the players tonight. Joe, take it away. All right, for the Strasburg-Zeeland Clippers, the home team here, 
uh, 19 carries for only 39 yards. Unfortunately, we see a lot of negatives as well as positives here. The biggest gain was Hunter Heisinga with 10 yards on uh, the biggest carry for him. And he had a total of roughly about uh, 29 yards, I believe I have for him. Passing-wise, they're 5 of 11 for 31 yards. Their biggest pass completion was to Nick Newsma for 15 yards. And they, uh, Newsma has completed for 28 yards of the 31. They have only one holding penalty for 10 yards. Now we flip over to the Napoleon Gackle Streeter Imperials, the away team, who leads here at halftime, 22 to zero. The rushing yards for them is going to be uh, the leading rusher is Dalton Jangla with 60 yards. I have for him uh, 42 yards for Jake Bakken, 29 for Nathan Weigel. Weigel, the largest uh, rushing gain of 29 yards. for uh, So total, they have 22 carries for 134 yards of rushing. Now for passing, they're 2 of 5 for just 20 yards. 12-yard uh, completion to Jameson Fedick was the largest play of the game for them passing. Now for the Imperials, they have two penalties in the first half, a 10-yard holding and a 5-yard offside call for 15 total yards of penalties. So once again, score here at halftime, 22-0 in favor for Napoleon Gackle Streeter in Strasburg, Zealand for tonight in Strasburg for tonight's Region 3 football game. Other scores going on around the region here before we continue with this game. Uh, Watford City leads Central Dakota, 20-0. Uh, looks like Minot leads Bismarck Century 14 to 10. Beulah leading Stanley 28-0 at half. Beulah, uh, he said that one. Moving on here to Hillsborough Central Valley leads Grafton 16 to 8. That's close to halftime. It is TGU leads number four North Prairie 14-0 in nine-man football. Uh, Blue Jay football, the Williston Coyotes 14, Blue Jays 0. That one's taking place in Williston for tonight and uh, see if I can find that big matchup in Class A going on between Velva Sawyer and Bishop Ryan here. Bishop Ryan 13, Velva Sawyer at 6 for some of the scores that are going on here for tonight. I'm trying to find some Linton and Shiloh uh, scores. I just can't find it just yet. But Joe, uh, the game has been tonight, we've seen actually quite a few more defense than anything, in my opinion, because the defense causes the turnovers, which equals the offense for kind of for both sides of the of, of the football. I was gonna say basketball. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> they're made of the same material. Kind yeah, of. I guess they are. <laughs> Either way, uh, expect uh, they. You know the. Strasburg Zealand Clippers had a pretty good series there to start out the second quarter, but it kind of just went went uh, sputtered out. And uh, honestly, the Imperials are just getting those turnovers and capitalizing on, capitalizing on them every time, Joe. Yeah, I mean, we saw the Clippers play some really good defense here tonight. I mean, obviously, um, they made some very nice plays, but unfortunately, when they've thrown their interceptions, the Imperials have scored and basically... Uh, the Clippers just need to get a uh, little bit together on their on their offense, and uh, they could be okay. So once again, halftime score, 22-0. Here at Dosh Field in Strasburg, North Dakota, the Imperials from Napoleon Gackle Streeter are leading the way against Strasburg, Zealand. We're going to take a quick break, and when we come back, we'll continue the game here on KSJB. We're back. In Strasburg, North Dakota, 22-0, as we still have a few moments here of the halftime show on KSJB. And we just had a score, and it looks like it's 14-0 Shiloh leading Linton H&B in Bismarck tonight for that Region 3 matchup. And so Region 3, having a lot of fun here, Joe. Yeah, I just got a score update here on the um, Ellendale Edgley Cullum leading Carrington at halftime 7-6. to Oh, that's a tough one yeah. over there. Yeah. Wow. So, so, yeah, once again, uh, we, we will have a couple playoff games coming up at the end of the season. Uh, we just don't know what playoff games we'll be doing due to, well, we just kind of follow the teams in our regions and see what happens, I guess. So, uh, for sure, we'll have one nine-man game for the first week because Class A doesn't start till the week after of the first round of nine-man. Yep. So, after that, we'll just have to play by ear and see what happens as we still have, after this, three weeks of nine-man football left, I believe. Yeah, and we've got some... Uh, 
the next uh, two to three weeks are very critical for a lot of teams, as we mentioned that in our pregame. That a lot of teams are they're, they're the either the two and three or three and four seed, and they need a win or a couple wins, you know, to basically uh, to stay alive for the playoff. And uh, so much can happen in a uh, little small town North Dakota rivalry <laughs> games, you could say. Well, next <laughs> week it'll be. It will be um, Napoleon Gackle Streeter taking on South Border, which is a critical matchup. So we'll be doing that one in Napoleon next week. After that, we'll be doing the game in Linton between Napoleon Gackle Streeter and Linton HMB. That one is another critical matchup because yes. you never know what might happen between that Shiloh and Linton game yet. Yep. And then the last game, guess what? Napoleon versus Kidder County, another critical matchup. And Kidder County lost those two main players. They're struggling right now. But uh, anything can happen, I guess, because you never know what, what might happen when a team pulls together, even after two star players down. You never know who might yep. step up. That's right. So once again, we're going to be following Napoleon and just how it worked out for the last of the season. It did that last year, too. We got four games in a row with Napoleon. It just works out how we do... Like we kind of try to split it evenly between all the nine-man region here on KSJB. And uh, it looks like we got almost three games for each team almost in for this season. Pretty yeah. close. Yeah. All right, so here we go to start things off in the third quarter. It's strasburg Zealand going to start it off, and there's the kick. And it's going to be picked up by their quarterback number 12 Hyzinga and it's going to be tackled inside the 20 from the starts of it from the start of it yeah Hyzinga just trying to run to his left there grab that ball about the 15 yard line and it was going to be a Jake Bakken that makes the stop for the Imperials so so the Clippers back in their own territory at about the 19 Oh, let's see. They're going to know about the 25-yard line, right, Kyle? Is yeah, that about the 25-yard line from what looks like it's going to start for the strasburg Zeeland Clippers. All right, so here we go, 22-0. Once again, the mercy rule is 30-0, so the Clippers have plenty of time to get a drive and get a score. And they're going to hand it off to Vandervorst to start things off, and he's plowing forward, pushing with his feet, moving backwards, and he's going to gain maybe two yards. Yeah, that was going to be uh, – Michael Fedick, as well as, see, I believe that was also uh, Andrew Miller on the tackle there, but a nice uh, plowing forward move there by the uh, Clippers as they uh, worked as a team there trying to break through that line and get that ball up a couple yards there. So here we go, facing a second and long, close to their own 30-yard line for the Clippers, shotgun. And it's going to be High Zynga, and he's going to get tackled on a side swipe near the 30. Still a gain of three yards on that carry. Yeah, he did a nice job reading and then had to do a sidestep. And as he stepped through, found a little room, Devin Weigel was right there and swallowed him right up, right at the 30-yard line. So that's going to bring up about uh, third and four here for, for the Clippers. Yeah, manageable third and four near their own 30-yard line. 10.46 remaining third quarter, 22-0 in favor for Napoleon Gackle Streeter. Shotgun formation for Hunter Izinga. Vandervorst right beside him. Two wide receivers near side of the field. And it's going to be a direct snap to Vandervorst. He's going to try to run for it, sidesteps, and he's going to get that five-yard gain. And that's going to be a first down for the Clippers. Yeah, Devin Weigel on the stop there for the Imperials, but a nice power move there by Vandervorst as he just plows his way up across that line of scrimmage and gets that ball up across the 35 to about the 36-yard line here for the Clippers. So first and 10 now for the Clippers. 10-18 remaining. Clippers, if they can take as much time as they want because there is no running clock. They're only down 22-0. It doesn't take effect until 30-0, and they're going to try to score and fight their way back in this second half. And there's going to be a direct snap to the quarterback, of course, in shotgun, but he's going to have blockers right beside him and going to get pushed out of bounds, only a gain of one yard on that carry by Hyzinga. Yeah, Hyzinga really had to run all the way to the near side of the field, which was rolling out to his right, and uh, he brings that thing all the way out of bounds where Jamison Fedick and Jacob Bitts and a few other Imperials the, make uh, the stop for the Imperials. Line. Second and nine from their own 37-yard line for Strasburg-Zeeland. 
Shotgun formation once again for Heisinga. Two wide receivers near side of the field. Vandervorst right beside him. Waiting for the snap. There it is. It's going to be direct snap to Vandervorst. He has running room with a nice hole. And he's going to be get inside the 50-yard line. That's going to be very close to a first down. Still an 8-yard gain. Yeah, see where they place that. If they place it at the 50, it's about an 8-yard gain. But they might bring it up to about the or the 40. Rather, he crossed the 45, I guess, and he, they're going to put it about the 46-yard line. Nope, they say first down now. Uh, yep, they are. So it was roughly around that 46-yard line, you said, just a tad past it, and there it is, first down, they say, from the refs. So a nice play there, uh, fake handoff to Heisinga, and it went right in, the snap went right to Vandervorst, and he got some blocking, and he was able to get that first down. 9.32 remaining in this quarter, third quarter. Underneath center is going to be Heisinga. Snap. He's going to be a qu quarterback keeper. Look at that running room on the right side. A gain of five, six yards on that one by Heisinga. Yeah, Heisinga looked like he was going to maybe go back, rolled out to his right, and uh, he just able to find a little hole and, and bring that across midfield. That puts the ball at about the 47-yard line now in Imperial Territory. Nine minutes remaining, third quarter, 22-0. A beautiful drive going on here for the Clippers. See if they, they don't want it to stall in the 30-yard line or so from the Imperials like it did last time on a good drive. Shotgun formation for Heisinga. Snap, handoff, Vandervorst. He's got those sidestep moves. Has some running room. Flag on the play, though. And that was a first down gainer, but we have a flag. Yeah, we'll see what this call is going to be. That was here. a jersey tackle. Yep. Oh, it's going to be on the Clippers, I believe. Yeah, I believe so, too. It's going to back them up, what, about 10 yards on holding on the Clippers. Yep. So 10 yards. Clippers. Now make it a second and 12, it looks like, about second and 12 after that 10-yard penalty for the holding call. To about second and 12 on the yeah, that's, that's a rough one there. That was a nice Go run on. there by the Clippers. Broke free. It was finally uh, Jacob Bitts making the tackle, but that does all erased, and that brings that ball back here to about the 45-yard line now. Uh, Clippers back in their own territory again. 8.36 remaining third quarter. They've controlled the ball this entire quarter so far, the Clippers. Shotgun, snap, dropping back for a pass as Heisinga under pressure, rolls out on the left side. He's running for his life, and he just throws it up and throws it away, makes it third and 12. Yeah, he really had to throw that ball away. I mean, it, uh, Nick Newsma was out in the receiving area, but it was out of bounds. But uh, Heisinga just out run out of room. He rolled out looking nothing there and then had to run to his down, left and ran all the way to the, to the far side of the field and then threw it away. 8.20 remaining. The time has stopped. First time in a, quite a while now. And a time, you would say, is still a factor. Even though it's 22-0, time is a factor for the Clippers. They're trying to put together their first scoring drive. Shotgun formation. Uh, well, looks like we got mishap play going on for the Clippers, but they finally get sorted out. Shotgun now for Heisinga. Puts a player in motion. Dropping back. Fakes the pass. Going up. Beautiful kind of pass there. And uh, the receiver looks like ran too far ahead of it. Now make it fourth and 12 on their own 45. Yeah, I think that was Alex Scher, the receiver on that one. The, the ball just uh, well underthrown, and Scher didn't get a chance at all to get a hand on that. It was under underthrown by about almost five yards. All right, so it looks like, are they going to go for it, or are they going to punt it at their own 45? They're talking, yeah. and it looks like they're going to go for it on their own 45 for the Clippers on a 4th and 12. Yeah. Yep, here we go. Two wide receivers to the right and left. Shotgun. That's a new quarterback, Alex Scher. Scher's going to roll out. He's under pressure. He's getting tackled by his, by his sleeve, I should say, his Under Armour sleeve. And that's going to be turnover and downs. Uh, Imperial starting at their own 40, or excuse me, the Clipper 40 or so. That was Pacey Feist on the tackle for the Imperials. And that was Imperial Alex Scher as the quarterback the there. Just the, uh, couldn't uh, get anybody open to get rid of it. And uh, he went down right about the 37-yard uh, yeah, line. So that's where the Imperials will 
start working now from right to left as they are in Clipper territory. 8.06 remaining. And the Imperials are up 22-0. Here we go. Underneath center is going to be Jangula. He's going to drop back for a pass, and he's going to go for the end zone for Fedig. And is there going to be a flag on the play because there was tripping? No, they are just going to say it was incomplete. Yeah, that pass far down the field there. As, uh, yeah, the receiver there just getting tripped up a little bit, but basically uh, I don't think anything intentional there. So they just wave it off as an incomplete pass down the field there for the Imperials. The ball stays at the 37 yard line here. Third quarter, 22-0 at Dosh Field in Strasburg. Underneath centers, Jangula facing a second and 10 at the row. Uh, looks like about the 37 of the Clipper side. Hand off to the left side and trying to run and getting lots of running room. It's going to be Jake Bakken and finally brought down inside the 20. And that's going to be a roughly 20-yard uh, scamper by Bakken. Yeah, Bakken moving left to right, takes the snap and running to his right and then cutting up toward the far side of the field, and he runs it all the way inside that 20-yard line for a first down, and the Imperials not only move the chains, but they're in the red zone. 7.43 remaining here in New York. Third quarter, 22-0. Underneath centers could be Jangula, one back in the backfield, waiting here for the snap, and they're going to hand it off to the left side, and trying to get some running room is going to be Jacob Bitts. He's trying to plow forward now after running the long side of the field, and it looks like he gains still roughly five yards on that carry. Yeah, about five yards Bits is right. Uh, uh, Bits running there all the way to the left to the near side of the field where he's finally brought down by Coleman Nusma the for the Clippers. Got another quick scoring update here. I see it. Ellendale Edgley Cullum now takes a 21-6 lead over Carrington in Ellendale. All right, and we got Shiloh Christian leading Linton H&B 30-6 at half for another score update. Thank you, Steve Allen, for that score. And we have a fumble, and it's going to be picked up by the Clippers in the red zone. A great defensive stop again by the Clippers. Yeah, I believe Adam Holm there making that stop and then grabbing that ball, jumping on it as it'll be a turnover here. What is that, Kyle, about the 15-yard line? Yeah, they were at the 15, and they turned it over, oh, copped it up on another bad oh, handoff. And just like that, Strasburg Zealand's taken over with 7.08 remaining here in this third quarter. They've controlled the time of possession in the third quarter, but still have nothing to show for it. Shotgun, Heisinga, handoff, Vanderforce, sidestep move. He almost broke free, only gains maybe two yards to make it second and eight. Yeah, just running to his left, trying to... Cut his way up the middle. Not much happening there. The Weigels kind of team up on uh, Devin Weigel making the stop there for the Imperials. Second down. All right, so here we go, waiting for the next place, uh, play Excuse me, on his second down. Still about second and nine from what it looks like on the chain gang. Waiting here on the shotgun formation. Heisinga, snap, dropping back for a pass, sidestep. Going to throw it inside with a beautiful pass and sidestep inside with a completion. And that's officially to Nicholas Newsma. And they were waiting for the flag there. As it looks like there was a late hit out of bounds by one of the Imperials, but uh, nothing happened for the flag. But still, first down for the Clippers. Yeah, it's going to bring the ball up to about the 29-yard line here for the Clippers is a nice uh, pass up ahead to Nick Newsma there. Uh, co nice completion there for the Clippers. First and 10 on the 29-yard line for the Clippers. They're moving the ball, just have nothing to show for it, down 22-0. Snap, quick to Vandervoorst. He's trying to do a sidestep, and he's going to get tackled behind the line of scrimmage. A loss roughly about three yards on that loss by Vandervoorst. Yeah, that was a... Tyler Long there for the tackle for the uh, Imperials, but just Vandervoorst trying to run up the middle. Looked like a high snap that he grabbed, but uh, just not able to do much with it. As we await here for the next play, on a second and long for the Clippers. Shotgun snap, dropping back, Heisinga. He's dancing in the background and moves to the left side, and he's beating another tackler. Jersey tackle just throws it up. 
And that one is going to be incomplete. He just threw it up there. Yeah, Jay Neptune was the only clipper around that ball, but it was thrown over his head. But uh, basically, Huizenga just running for his life there, rolled out to the left, and nothing happening. And then he got grabbed by the jersey and tried to quick throw it down the field before he went down, but uh, nothing happening. And it looks like we're going to have a timeout on the field. 50, uh, excuse me, we're going to take a minute timeout, 22-0, back in one minute, KSJB. We are back here in Strasburg. Caldeen Joe Jacobs, 22-0 after that quick timeout by the Clippers. And here goes a quick move. Uh, that's actually going to be a pass by, uh, actually, <laughs> that was a trick play. And dropping the pass was Nicholas Newsma. Uh, that was from the quarterback to the running back. The running back drops back and passes it to the wide receiver, incomplete. Yeah, Nusma, boy, he had a lot of running room if he would have caught that, but it just, the pass may be a little underthrown, but he just right through his hands pretty much, not able to reel that one in. Boy, that would have been a, about a good 25-yard pass there. Beautiful trick play. Yeah. And uh, that's one of those common trick plays, of course, where it officially goes from quarterback to one of the running backs moving out. The running back then drops back and goes for a pass without going to the line of scrimmage, and he tries to get to one of the wide receivers downhill uh, because they usually bite on the running back pretending they're going to run it. Yeah, that was uh, quite an interesting uh, play. A nice tr nice trick play, though, by the Clippers to shake something up here. they got to get something going. It's 5.33 to go here in the third quarter. But That's we have the a second drop pass that would have yeah, been going for been. a touchdown or a huge gain. Yep. I believe there's a penalty they're dis discussing or something here. Not sure. Uh, it was on the Clippers, so the penalty makes it fourth and 20. And that means the punt team's coming out. Fedig in the backfield. Or, excuse me, Fedig ready to return the punt, I should say, for the Imperial, excuse me, Imperials. 5.33 remaining. Punt is high up there. It's going to take a bounce. Picked up by Fedig at the 50. He's going backwards. Back forwards now to the 45. Does another spin move. Fedek's still going, and he's going to get tackled finally at the 35, 34-yard line in Clipper territory. Yeah, that was Coleman Newsma making the, the stop finally for the Clippers, but a couple nice spin moves there by Fedek, and he's able to uh, get that ball from about the 45-yard uh, line in in across midfield and all the way up here to about the 35 yard line. So a nice return there by the Imperials. So here we go, waiting for the next play for the Imperials. They're on the Clipper 35, 34 yard line or so. Snap, handoff to Bakken. Cuts back inside, gain of five yards by Bakken. Yeah, Bakken rolling to his right. And then uh, running to his right and then cutting up the middle, and he's brought back by Hunter Azinga to make the stop there. But uh, nice gain of about, what, five yards or so, Kyle, on that play? Yeah, that's about it, of five yards on that. As we are waiting here now for the next play on a second and five inside the 30 in Clipper territory. Third quarter still rolling, 442 remaining, 22-0. As underneath center is going to be Jangula, one back in the backfield. That's Nathan Weigel, one wide receiver to left. Puts a player in motion. Quarterback keeper for Jangula. And he's going to plow over one of the defenders, but only gains roughly two yards. But a fumble. And it's going to be picked up by the Clippers again. Another fumble by the Imperials deep into Clipper territory. Yeah, Jangula running that ball to the left. As about as hard as he could run it. Brought down by Nick Nusma. And then uh, that... 23. Ball Young popping one. out as he basically uh, hit that. As he hit the ground pretty much. Uh, Nick Newsma, I do believe, caused that fumble. So here they go. Another turnover. But once again, it's deep in their own territory. And uh, they have a long way to drive to get their first score of the game here tonight. Shotgun formation. Let's see what can happen in this drive. Maybe some luck, but they're going to be tackled in the end zone. Is uh, excuse me, in the backfield, I should say. Vandervorst, the loss of two. Yeah, Vandervorst just trying to run that ball. That one, uh, Andrew Miller and Devin Weigel on the stop there for the Imperials, right about that, just before the line of scrimmage. So a loss of a couple yards there. 
for Vanderhorst. Four minutes remaining third quarter, 22-0 Imperials, and that score's been stuck like that for a while. Now, not much happening on offenses here tonight. It's been just defense and a quick offensive score. That's about it. Waiting here for shotgun for Heisinga. High snap, grabs it out of the air. He's going to throw it, complete it to Vandervorst. Vandervorst gets tackled by Weigel. That's a loss of five yards on that completion. Yeah, wow. To make a complete pass and uh, rolling out to his left there, but uh, just nothing there. Nathan Weigel was all over Vandervorst there. And uh, loss of a few more yards there. So that's going to yeah, bring it to third and 16 inside the 20-yard line. So yeah. third and 16 inside the 20-yard line for the Clippers. Their own 20-yard line, three minutes remaining, third quarter, 22-0. Nobody has scored yet in this third quarter. Spread formation, two wide receivers to left and right. Shotgun formation, quarterback is going to be Alex Scher. Scher is going to hand it off to, uh, once again to Heizinga. Heizinga is going to try to run for it, and he's going to go out of bounds, only gains about five yards to make it fourth and ten. Yeah, that, that pass was a handoff to a handoff. Heizinga grabbing it, running to his left then to the far side as he'll just run out of bounds as he had about three Imperials that were about to uh, – tackle him had he not just stepped it out of bounds stopping the clock at 246 to go here in the third quarter it's 22 to 0 in favor of the Imperials and yeah, we've had a lot of turnovers in this matchup there's the punt way up there by Heisinga wow that was a high one and <laughs> nobody can find it really but it's going to finally drop up at the 44 yard line great field position once again for the Imperials yeah very high kick like Kyle said that thing was Almost had to look out the window of the crow's nest here to see how high that one went up there, but uh, uh, landing down about the 43-yard line. So the the Imperials will start in Clipper territory at about uh, the 43-yard line of the Clippers. All right, so here we go for the Imperials. They've turned it over quite a few times here in this third quarter alone. Underneath center, that's going to be Dalton Jankila. Two wide receivers to the left. They're going to do a quick pass picked up by Fedig. Fedig, yeah, the defender trips. He's going to try to roll forward to the right side, and he's going to finally get gang tackled by four Clippers, but still a gain of nine yards. Yeah, nice, powerful play there. Uh, just uh, Fedig running that one, trying to uh, pretty much get up the middle, gets that cross that uh, going to get it up to about the 35-yard line, but... Like uh, Kyle said, there's about four Clippers there that uh, finally make the tackle. Two minutes remaining, third quarter, 22-0 here in Strasburg. Kyle Dean, Joe Jacobs, two wide receivers to the left. Shotgun, or excuse me, underneath center is going to be Jangula with Weigel in the backfield. Snap, and they're going to hand it off to Weigel, and he's going to gain close to the first down. It might be third in inches or... First down. We'll wait here what the ref says. Yeah, it's going to be uh, Jay Neptune on the tackle there for the Clippers. But uh, gain of one only. It's third and short. Third yeah, it looks like it's going to be yard. third and about one here after that run by Nathan Weigel. 120 remaining here in your third quarter. 22-0. Imperials trying to drive on a third and one now. Deep in the Clipper territory underneath centers. Jangula, watch the quarterback sneak. They're going to drop back, actually, in the third and one. He's going to throw it, and it's going to be completed right on the edge, and he's going to get it in, and that's a completion to Jake Bakken, first down. Jake yeah, so that'll move the chains, and that's going to – that ball was on the 34, and he stepped out just before the 20, right? And I believe he's uh, – it'd be about a gain of about uh, 10 yards on that play roughly. Yeah, roughly a 10-yard gain or so to make it first and 10 inside the 30-yard line in Clipper territory. Imperials control the ball with one minute remaining in your third quarter. They're up 22-0. Two wide receivers to the left and we have two backs in the backfield underneath centers. Could be Jangula. He's going to fake pump it. Dropping back. He's going to sidestep to the right side under pressure by the Clippers. Trying to plow, for plow forward and that's a loss of 7 yards on the sack. Yeah. 
Jangla just trying to find something down the field and had to roll out to his right. Nothing there. And he went toward to running to the far side of the field, which was to his right. And uh, he was being chased by about three or four clippers and just nothing there. And they finally took him down. So that puts the ball here at about the 32-yard uh, line here with the, the Imperials with it in Clipper territory. Second and 17 around the 30-yard line, 20 seconds remaining in the third quarter. Underneath centers, Jangula, two wide receivers to the left side. He's going to do a quarterback keeper. Here is Jangula. He's going to plow forward, get swarmed by four Clippers and gains maybe five, four yards, it looks like, on that carry. Yeah. Jangla just showing a little power there, rolling out to his left and then uh, running to his left a little ways before he tries to turn and go up the field. And uh, about three or four clippers there that that drag him down. Now we have a timeout on the field. 22-0, end of the third quarter. 22-0, end of the third quarter. Imperials in the lead. We'll be back in 30 seconds, KSJB. 22-0 as we're going to start the fourth quarter here in Strasburg. 22-0 in favor for Napoleon Gackle Streeter, leading the Strasburg Zealand Clippers on their homecoming night. Joe, that third quarter was pretty messy on turnovers. Yeah, it really was. The uh, Clippers, I think, actually controlled the ball a little more Good there job. and actually moved Four the ball a little yards. more than the than the Imperials did. Or but yet, uh, the Imperials, yards. as uh, toward the end of that quarter, were starting to starting to drive the ball a little better. But they had a couple fumbles there that. Uh, yeah, a little sloppy, like you said. Yeah, just a little sloppy game, but here we go. Third and a manageable 13, but it's in deep in Clipper territory, so that's why it's manageable. They can go for it on fourth down if need be. Waiting here for Jangula underneath center to start out this fourth quarter up 22-0, and they're going to hand it off on a quick handoff to the right side. Jake Bakken has running room, gets plows forward, and he's going to get inside the 15-yard line. It looks like inside the 10. I think that's first and goal. From what I, I could see. I believe so. Yeah, that's going to be a good, uh, let's see. They moved the chains on that one. It looks like 11 yards, so it's going to be first and 10 from the 11. So no first and goal. Okay. So first and 10 from the 11 from this angle where the ref is standing. 11.46 remaining in your Fourth quarter, Imperials up 22-0. Jangula is underneath center. On, on the backfield is Weigel. One wide receiver to the right, that's Vedig. And he's going to hand it off to the left side. Running is Jacob Bits to the corner. Gets to the edge. Touchdown, Imperials. That's 11-yard touchdown run by Jacob Bits. Yeah, Bits moving from right to left in motion. And he grabbed the snap, or the handoff, rather, from Jangula. And he ran to the left all the way to the corner on the far side of the field as he turned and runs it in untouched. So 28-0 now the Imperials lead with just just the start of the fourth quarter here. 11.26 to go fourth quarter as they go for the two-point conversion. And if I'm not mistaken, if they get the two-point conversion, it'll be 30-0. to zero. That means the running clock will take effect. That all depends if they get the two-point conversion and they don't. So with that, no running clock. 28-0. Two-point conversion, no good. Imperials in the lead back in a minute, KSJB. We are back here in Strasburg, North Dakota. Kyle Dean, Joe Jacobs. And Joe Jacobs had a score update for that EEK game. What was it there, Joe? 27-6. Uh, to 6, Ellendale Edgley Cullum on top of Carrington right now. That game going on in Ellendale. And uh, I don't know, do you have anything yep, more I'm just recent gonna... on the uh, Shiloh-Linton game? Yep, I'm going to check that for the Region 3-9 man. Right now it is 30 to 6 at halftime yet, so the third quarter just hasn't started yet on that. So Shiloh uh, cruising right now, but of course anything can happen. Here we go, kickoff. Let's start things off going to the Strasburg Zealand Clippers. And that one's going to be picked up by Hyzinga. Sidestep, swing move. Gets tackled inside the 35-yard line for the Strasburg Zealand Clippers. Yeah, Izinga returns that for about 12 yards. He's running to his right a little bit to the far side of the field and swallowed up there by a pack of Imperials. But this ball will be placed here at about the 30. 31. Yep, 31 yard line here. So the so the Clippers go and they'll be moving right to left on the radio dial. And they've had a few good drives that eat up the clock, but. 
nothing to show for it, and they're trying to not get that goose egg on their homecoming night. Timeouts right away for the Clippers. Mishap play with 11-18 remaining. We will, too, back in a minute, KSJB. We're back here at Dosh Field in Strasburg. Clippers control the ball down 28-0, fourth quarter. And there's going to be a snap. They're going to hand it off. I believe that was... Was well, that Vandervoorst? I didn't see whom. Yeah, we'll have to look at the bottom of the pile. That uh, Newsma. Nick Newsma. Yep. Gain of two. Yeah, Newsma. First run for him, actually, as he just kind of runs right up the middle trying to power his way through. It took about three or four Imperials to bring him down. 10.50 remaining, fourth quarter, 28-0 in favor for the Stras, uh, excuse me, for the Napoleon Gackel Streeter Imperial, Strasburg Zeeland trying to get some points on the board. And they're going to hand it off this time to Vandervoorst running room, but gets tackled in the backfield, loss of two yards. Jacob Bits there on the on the stop for the Imperials. Wow, Just a quick handoff as Vandervoorst runs to his right yeah. toward the far side they're of the field. Down. And Jacob Bits About right nine. there to make that stop for the Imperials, bringing up third and ten. Loss of about two yards on that play. Yeah, roughly a third and ten near the 30-yard line in Clipper territory. Shotgun formation for Heizinga. Vandervorst right beside him. One wide receiver to left, one to the right. Dropping back for a pass on a third and ten. Steps up in the pocket, rolls out to the right, trying to carry it now. Rolls back to the right side, goes backwards, still doing a spin move. And he's finally brought down. That was a lot of running, getting nowhere in that little pocket. <laughs> Yes, it was. I think I, I couldn't even count how many spin moves he made, but he did a fantastic job breaking some of those tackles. Looked like he was going to get hit from behind. Not sure. Uh, it looked like he had eyes behind his helmet there, but he was able to break about two or three tackles doing a nice job there, but just didn't get anywhere but back up to about the line of scrimmage. So fourth and ten now for the Clippers. 9.28 remaining, and we have the punt team out getting ready to return it. Jake Bakken for the Imperials. That's a beautiful punt right there. Picked up by Bakken near the 40. Side steps, and he's going to get tackled by the 40. He was plowing himself forward. He was kind of roly poly oly there on all the players. <laughs> yeah, he had, I think, five clippers hanging on him. Uh, not exactly sure who made the actual stop. Nick Peterson, I believe, was on the first initial dragged down but there was about four or five other clippers that it took to make that stop but that puts the ball right at the 40 yard line almost the 41 here where the uh, Imperials will start their drive they lead 28-0 9.08 to go here in the ball game here, here we go on the play Imperials control the ball first and 10 from their own 41 Nine minutes remaining here in this football game, fourth quarter. Underneath center, it's what this is actually going to be a different underneath center. That's going to be Nathan Weigel getting some reps and trying to plow forward. It's going to be Jacob Bits for a good six yard gain. We got a little switch up going on here. Yeah, they, uh, Weigel takes the snap there, hands off to Bits. Bits just running on the left side of the quarterback up the middle and gets Second that ball up across the 45 to about the 47 yard line. So a good six yard gain there by Bits. 841 remaining, second and roughly five, roughly four or so. Underneath center is gonna be Nathan Weigel. In the backfield is Jacob Bits once again. Bits is gonna get the handoff, flying forward left side, almost breaks free. He gets a good tackle, but then another great tackle by the Clipper there. And that's gonna be a gain of 10 yards by Bits. Yeah, nice powerful run there, taking the handoff there. Bits running up the middle, found a little room right across midfield, gets up to about the 45 where he's hit, and then finally brought down by Hunter Hyzinga right at about the 48-yard line, or Eight. 43, rather. 8.20 remaining at the Clipper 43-yard line are the Imperials. Weigel's underneath center once again. Snap, Weigel, handoff, why not? That's uh, actually, no, a fake handoff. And that's going to be Weigel with the carry gains about four or five on that. Yeah, I think they'll place that ball up at about the 40-yard line. We'll see where uh, where they actually place it. But, yeah, it's kind of a fake handoff, and Weigel running right up the middle, ball and they're going to put it at about the 39-yard line. So about a four-yard gain there Six. by Nathan Weigel 
as quarterback. Second and six, 743 remaining here in your ball game. 28-0, Imperials. Imperials control the ball. Weigel's underneath center. Player in motion, Weigel, and that's a fumble on the handoff. Fight for it underneath, and we're going to wait to see what the refs say. Yeah, I believe the Imperials, I believe, have it back. It was, uh, it was maybe down uh, as they touched it. Jake Bitts trying to recover that, and uh, that's going to be a two-yard loss to make it third and nine. Two-yard loss there. We'll say on the quarterback Weigel with the two-yard loss. Seven minutes remaining. Fourth quarter, 28-0 in Strasburg. Caldeen, Joe Jacobs online, ksjbam.com. Weigel underneath center. Snap. Handoff. Left side. That's Colton Jangula, the freshman running back. He gains two yards. Yeah. Jangula there just running to his left and then up the middle. Gets it across the 40 and uh, to about the 30 nine yard line but that's going to be about fourth down and five here now for the imperials 630 remaining looks like they're going to go for it on fourth and five inside the 40 yard line in officially clipper territory weigel's underneath center once again looks like mccleary coach mccleary's giving some of the reps for the younger players here we go on a fourth and five snap Dropping back, Weigel plows forward, quarterback keeper, and that's going to be very close. It looks like he's going to be short and going to be a turnover on downs. Yeah, maybe just a yard short at the most. They're, uh, yep, they're saying it is short and it'll be a turnover. So it's about a, maybe about a four-yard gain there by Weigel on the keeper, but that puts the ball up here. Clippers take over. Yeah, the Clippers will take over here at roughly a. About, about the 30 35, let's see where they place it here, maybe the 34. Yeah, about the 34-yard line where the Clippers will take over with it. They are still in their own territory, so they have a long march to go here. 6.03 to go in the ball game, 28-0. They trail the Imperials on top here in Strasburg. That's their homecoming night here tonight. They're trying not to get that goose egg for tonight. Shotgun formation it looks like, you no, know, underneath center this time. And they're going to just do a trick play with a quick handoff to Nuzma, gain of five. Nuzma brings it up, yeah, five yards. that handoff, Nick Nuzma, uh, rolling out to his right and then Second going down. all the way toward the far About side of the field where he's brought down right at the 40-yard line. So it'll be second and five here. Five. 542 remaining, 28th is zero, second and five, like Joe said. And it uh, looks like it's on the, is that the 40? I think that's the 40. Yep. yep, that's the 40. And they're going to hand it off with a toss to Heizinga. And he is under pressure. That's a horse collar tackle. That's an automatic flag. That's an automatic first down on the horse collar tackle. Yeah, flag. That happened right in front of us. It was pretty easy to see that one. Heizinga running to his left from the pitch out and then running all the way to the near side right in front of us here in the box. That's a costly penalty, Joe. Yes. 522 remaining. Okay, so it's Sam for second or Sam for third and long. Uh, we're going to see exactly where the football is going to be placed from the spot of the penalty. It's an automatic first down. That's for sure. Yeah. And they're going to be, that's going to be roughly a 15 yard penalty or 20. That's going to be about a 20-yard penalty from the spot of the flag. The yeah, that's going to move it all the way up to the about the 46-yard line here in, in Imperial Territory. Yeah. 5.22 remaining, 28-0 in your ball game. Strasburg Zealand trying to get that goose egg off the off the scoreboard. Shotgun formation. We're going back to Heisinga now. Vandervorst right beside him. Snap. Fakes to Vandervorst. And there goes Heisinga. Gaining two yards. Yeah, just trying to run to his left and up the middle a little bit. And uh, it's going to be A.J. Dahl on the tackle there for the Imperials. Five minutes remaining in your ball game. Second and long coming up for the Strasburg Zealand Clippers. They're officially in Imperial territory in this region to match up. And uh, at this rate, it looks like the Imperials are going to try to move on to another record, to a 4-1 and one record. 
Lots of, about lots of fourth quarter left, about 441. And it's going to be Heisinga, and he's going to try to plow forward, and he still gains uh, roughly four yards. Yeah, nice run there. Finds a little room running to his right up the middle. Tyler Long on the stop for the Napoleon Gackle Streeter Imperials. It's going to bring up about third and five roughly. A ball is on a 40-yard line. Clippers have it in Imperial territory. 4.15 remaining, 28-0, third and five. Shotgun formation, Heisinga, Vandervorst right beside him. Two wide receivers on the left side waiting here for the snap. And it's going to be a direct snap to Vandervorst. Vandervorst trying to go up inside the middle, and he's going to get that first down. That's a good six-yard gain. Yeah, nice run there by Vandervorst. Uh, he, was, he was well overdue as the last couple, three times he's run the ball. He's just been in a negative uh, couple yardage here and there. So he gains a nice positive six yards there running it up the middle. Now a quick play here as we go again. First and 10, and it's dropping back for a pass. That's going to be Heisinga going on the far side of the end zone. Cut! And we're going to have a touchdown for the Clippers. No flags on the play. Touchdown. That's officially going to be... Oh, wait, there's a holding call. There was a flag on the end zone there, Joe. Not the end zone, right here at the back of the original line of scrimmage. And Global right in. Holding on the offense. Yep, so their touchdown was nulled. That would have been a 35-yard touchdown pass, but... Uh, I was looking at the flag over on the far side, but there was no flag, and here it is right back at the line of scrimmage, Joe. Yeah, right here. Yeah, We were looking down the field wide open. Tanner Goble caught that ball and was able to run it in, but unfortunately that, ball, that will all be called back here as the ball will be now backed up from the, let's see, it'll be behind back to about the 40, see where they put this about one. About the 46-70 yard line, but the good news is it's, First and 20. At least it's a first down. So that's the good news off that penalty, but most of it's bad news as the yeah. touchdown was nulled yeah. into the end zone. Yeah, another holding penalty. That kind of hurts. That's uh, 20 yards of penalties here in the second half for the Clippers. 340 remaining. Izinga rolling out to the right. He has plenty of running room. He's going to keep running. He's going to keep running on the far side. He gains 13 yards on that rush. Yeah, he rolled out like he was going to pass it, and then he yards. had a nice open pocket to his right, and he ran to the far side of the Three field and then cut down. forward at about the 40 about and gets all the way up to so roughly go. about the 31-yard line where they knock him out of bounds. Second and six at the 31-yard line for the Clippers in Imperial Territory. 3.31 remaining. They're just trying to get that goose egg off the board once again on their homecoming night in Strasburg. Shotgun formation for Heisinga. He's going to drop back for a pass. He's rolling out to the left side, trying to go back into running back mode. And he's going to gain, oof, it's going to be roughly four yards, give or take. We'll wait and see here, but there's a flag on the play already. Yep, we have another flag on the play there. Heisinga rolling out, looking, had two receivers to his left. But uh, just had to take off running with that one as he wasn't able to make a pass. That's going to be a block, a legal block by the Clippers. All right, so that's going to be a penalty to make it second and long. But uh, let's see how far they're going to move back the ball. Yeah, they're still discussing it out here. The well, now, officials. Yeah, I don't know what the play was now, what the... It looks like they're finally moving it back. So it's time for second, uh, third and short. It's going to be second and about 15. Down. Give or take, it looks like, Joe. Second and 15, yeah. it looks like. Yeah, about that. It's oh, it looks be like it's going to be 17. Second right. and 17. Placed at about the 42-yard line. So. And that's a rough penalty again on the Clippers as they were driving again. 319 remaining in this ball game, 28-0. Shotgun, two wide receivers to the right. Heizinga takes the snap, fakes the handoff, and wide open running room by Heizinga, left side. And he's going to be finally tackled after gaining roughly 20-plus yards. That's going to be near the 20-yard line. That's about a 20-plus yard run. 
Yeah, nice job there. They totally faked out the Imperials as it looked like it was going into Vandervoorst's hands, and it was uh, Huizinga that took it and had running room to the left as he run to the near side and running it up to about the 20-yard line. So a 22-yard run there by Huizinga. 28-0, 2.59 remaining. And here we go on a first and 10 from the 20-yard line. Once again, here are the Clippers in the red zone, but they have nothing to show for it with that goose egg on the board. Homecoming night, trying to get their touchdown here for tonight. Shotgun formation for the Clippers. Izinga, high snap, and he's going to try to run it. Runs into his own lineman. He's still plowing forward on a beautiful run, and he's still going. He gets back outside, and Joe, he's still going. <laughs> Finally taken down now. <laughs> <laughs> it's probably inside the maybe the ten yard line. That's first and goal, they say. Officially first and goal. That's a that's a thirteen yard gain. I'm not sure how Heisinga did that. He had like <laughs> uh, the whole Imperial team dragging on him. It looked like he was gonna pick up about five six yards, and then he just kept on. He was able to get off back to the right and uh, come out of there a little bit and uh, he finally was taken down. First and goal from the 70 yard line for the Clippers. That goose egg getting closer to the disappearing. See if they're just gonna keep running the ball underneath center is gonna be high Zynga. Vandervoorst in the backfield. They fake the toss, driving up inside and it's gonna be close. And they're gonna say second and goal near the, looks like inside the five now from what I can tell for the ref standing. Yeah, just uh, Huizinga keeping that ball, running it up the middle. Quarterback keeper. It looks like it's going to be a gain of about three yards, so they'll move the ball up to about the four-yard line here and uh, see what the Clippers can do. Under two minutes remaining, 28-0. Clippers are just trying to punch it in. Kyle Dean, Joe Jacobs here underneath center. is going to be Huizinga. Eye formation for the running backs. One wide receiver to the left side, and they're going to hand it off right through the middle. The Newsma. Looks like he's inside the, still inside the five. Only a gain of one by Newsma. Yeah, couldn't tell who made the stop there, but Newsma just getting that ball from the handoff, and running kind of to his left and trying to get into the end zone, but just a gain of maybe one yard on the play. 114 remaining. And the Clippers are finally inside the five. Underneath center is going to be Izinga, and he's good quarterback keeper, and I he did get it. They said he officially got the about two yard touchdown run by Izinga. Uh, yeah, lot, roughly a three or four yard touchdown run by Izinga, and they're on the board. Yeah, just running it right up the middle. It was Drew Weigel that had him wrapped up right at the goal line, but apparently it was going to be Izinga uh, breaking the goal line plane and uh, putting six points on the board for the Clippers there as he was tackled right at the goal line but not before getting into that end zone so 28 to 6 now as the Clippers go for a two-point conversion all right so here we go for two point 57 seconds remaining shotgun formation and it's going to be up in the air on the bad snap Vandervoort's trying to get it out and he's going to go nowhere two-point conversion no good conversion, no and good. just like that it is 28 the 6 the Imperials will still come out with the victory the here with less than a minute left, but uh, they finally get on the board for their homecoming night here, Joe. Yes, they did. That's good for them. They they worked pretty hard on some of those drives earlier, too. It just they didn't uh, weren't able to score to show it because uh, they had enough to uh, have this a pretty close game, but they just couldn't quite get their drives. Um, they'd get all the way to about the 30 or so in the – Imperial territory and they just kind of stalled out just not able to put the points on the board when they really needed them and the Imperials had quite a few turnovers in the third quarter it could have gone either way for the blowout side if you want to say it it or could have been close or a huge blowout but honestly I thought this was a pretty close game throughout the game just because of the mishaps the Clippers had at the beginning of the game in which the Imperials capitalize yep I'm just going to mention a few uh Youngsters out here for the Imperials right now. I see uh, Levi Lang is out, uh, Quinn Lindenberg, Peyton Grunefelder for the Imperials, uh, Colton Jangla, Drew Weigel. 
see if I can catch them all as they're just well, under a minute to play here. I don't know if we're doing the onside kick or not, just to try to get the ball back. You never know, since it is the fourth quarter, 57 seconds left. Waiting for the kick for the Clippers. And they are going to just bunt it out. Picked up by the Imperials. Wide open running room. And he's going to try to go all the way. He's Hunter Hake. Hunter Hake has one man to beat. And that's going to be a touchdown. That's a kickoff return for a touchdown. Drew Weigel. Oh, excuse me. 22, Drew Weigel. There it is. Drew Weigel, that's a junior on that one. Yeah, he caught that ball at about the 25-yard uh, line, to say. And uh, he run to the uh, near side, and there was really uh, no defenders there. He was able to run all the way right in front of us here on this near side of the field all the way down, pretty much runs it in untouched to make it 34 uh, that was to a, 6. That was about a 72-yard kickoff return, I think. Give or take, it looks like. I think it was inside the 30, so about a 72-yard kickoff return. Two-point conversion pending, and like you said, 34 to 6, 45 seconds remaining. And uh, Clippers will have one more chance to score here, it looks like. Waiting here for the two-point conversion. Underneath center, that's going to be Garrett Jangula. Backfield, Colton Jangula. Snap. Lost the snap. Rolling on the ground, picked up by the Clippers. Two-point conversion, no good. 34 to 6. We'll be back. Oh, no, we'll take. We'll be back here in 30 seconds, KSJB. 34 to 6. Once again, that was a kickoff return by Mr. Weigel. Drew Weigel getting that kickoff return that happened just a few seconds ago there, Joe. Yeah, he did a nice job returning that. Read the defense real well and uh, just runs it in untouched. So here we go. Clippers will get in our chance. Uh, See, so you get a few more points on the board with 45 seconds remaining on your fourth quarter. And there's the kickoff. Uh, not a really good kick, and it's going to be muffed and just finally covered up. Yeah, Jordan Heisinga going to just grab it. He touched it and uh, had to pretty well jump on the ball to uh, keep him from uh, turning it over. So that ball is going to be here about the 35-yard line. This will be the Clippers with 43 seconds to go to see if they can put any more points on the on the board as they trail 34 to 6 here on their home field. And we had a timeout by the Clippers there. Just really quick, I think. They're going to try probably some trick plays. You know, this is the time to experiment, you would have to say. As right. they're approaching 0 and 5 for their record, the Imperials will move to 4 and 1 for their record after this game is complete. Yeah, some uh, new faces also in the in the game here for them. See like uh, Alex Feist in the game. And yeah, try to try to help or try to say who else, but they're still in their pack on the sidelines here. It looks like uh, Hunter Hake and Jordan Heizinga. And you know, Brian Schumacher said they, he has a young team. So he might as well try to get some experience for them. Yep. And timeout's going to run. Schumacher's talking to his players one last time. Oh All the young players are coming out for both sides of the football. All right, we got Trayton Vetch, uh, Thomas Schaefbauer in there. And let's see. Yeah, I think I got most of them. You got most of them. All right, here we go. Alex shares in shotgun. Right beside him is Jordan Heisinga. Dropping back is Cher. He's going to drop it way down and... And incomplete there, make it second and 10 from the 36-yard line for the Clippers. Yeah, that pass intended for uh, Hake on that one. Uh, yeah, Hunter Hake running down the field there, just a little overthrown. A uh, few yards, not able to get a hand on it, but second down. Uh, bring up second and 10 here for the Clippers. 38 seconds remaining, fourth quarter, 34 to 6. Clippers are down on their homecoming nights. Player in motion, Alex Scher, player and uh, dropping back to the right side. Scher's going to try to run it. He's going to say go deeper for the player, and he's just going to pass the line of scrimmage now, I think. He, he wanted to pass it. He's still going to get the first down on that 14-yard gain. Gets hit pretty hard by the Imperials. Yeah, he gets wrapped up pretty good there. On the clock. I believe that's uh, – see, we've got uh, – 
couple of the Imperials there. Bronson Bettit. A couple other younger players. Jaden Lindenberg out there. Clock's running with 17 seconds remaining. Shares in the backfield. See if they can get one last heave. And that's going to be completed with a huge hit there on Jordan Heisinga, the freshman. The clock's running. That's going to be the end of the game right there. Final score, strasburg Zeeland has six. And Napoleon Gackle Streeter gets the win with 34. Once again, 34 to 6. Final score, the Imperials win it in this Region 3 matchup. Back in a few moments for the postgame show, KSJB. We're back here at Dosh Field, Strasburg, North Dakota. Final score, Napoleon Gackle Streeter. 34, and the Strasburg Zealand Clippers, 6 for the Clippers homecoming night tonight. Let's get going here. First touchdown was at the 6.05 mark for the Imperials, and that was officially by the quarterback number 12, Dalton Jangila there for that touchdown. Two-point conversion good, 8-0. It then was 16-0 after a 29-yard run by Nathan Weigel for the Imperials. Two-point conversion good. And a couple turnovers in the first half. Moving on to the Imperials. They score with 10.53 remaining in the second quarter. It was Jangula with a one-yard touchdown run. Two-point conversion, no good. 22-0 Imperials. And that's what it was at halftime. Moving on now to the third quarter. It was just a mess. Fumble, punt, fumble, turnover. Just a, a messy quarter for both of them. Then we got scoring again starting off the fourth quarter. 11-26 remaining in the fourth quarter. The Imperial score 11-yard touchdown run. That is Mr. Jacob Bitts. Two-point conversion, no good. 28-0 Imperials. And then the Clippers finally get on the board with 57 seconds remaining in the game. It was a four-yard touchdown run by their quarterback, Hunter Izinga. Two-point conversion, no good, 28-6. And then we had a kickoff return for a touchdown. That was uh, Mr. Drew Weigel with that. Two-point conversion was no good, 34-6 is your final score for tonight in this region matchup. The Imperials improved to 4-1 and one on the season as we're over halfway through the mark. And it looks like the Clippers, they fall to 0-5 here for tonight in this matchup. As Joe Jacobs will have some stats coming up here very shortly. Let's take a look at some of the scores going all along the region. Number one, Laramore defeats number two, Park River, Fourville, Lincoln, 40-0. That's a number one versus number two, and Laramore just ran over number two ranked Park River Fordville Lincoln 40 to zero. Wow. Uh, Class AAA Grand Fork Central defeated Fargo North 29 0. Windmere Lidgerwood defeats Lamore Litchville Marion 46 0. It was number four North Prairie defeating TGU 24 22 in a close matchup. New Salem Glen Ullum all over Beach 60 to 12. West Fargo over West Fargo Cheyenne, 26-0. Dickinson over Mandan, 42-28. Kidder County over Central McLean, 30-0. By the way, that's a Region 3 matchup. Uh, looks like Ellendale Edgley Column leads Carrington, 40-12. At your end, uh, close to the fourth quarter, I should say. So EEK getting a Region win here if everything rolls in the fourth quarter yet. And moving on, Beulah defeats Stanley 40-8. to And now we have, uh, looks like Dickinson Trinity leading Valley City 21-6. to But I believe that score became a three-point game 21-18 at the end of the fourth quarter. Still going, I believe. We have Mr. Joe Jacobs coming up here with some stats here shortly. And uh, I guess the end of the third quarter, number four, Bishop Bryan leads number three, Velva Sawyer 27-6 in that matchup. Joe Jacobs, what do you got for some stats from this game tonight? All right, we'll start with the Strasburg Zealand Clippers. In that second half, they had 25 carries for 115 yards. Now, this is all unofficial, of course. They were uh, they only had 39 yards of rushing in that first half, so they carried the ball 44 times for 154 yards. Their biggest rusher was uh, Hunter Heisinga with 76 yards in the second half. Overall, he had 90 total rushing yards. Uh, he was the, the biggest... Uh, mover of the ball with a 22-yard run in the uh, third quarter. And now for passing, they were uh, three of, let's see, what do I got here? I got Unofficially. To, yeah, un <laughs> unofficially here. They were five of 11 for 31. They were, they were only seven, let's see, they were three of, got to 
do this right here. 10, three of 10 here. Too much scribbling on this sheet of paper here. That's but there fine. were three of 10 for <laughs> only seven yards in that uh, second half. So overall, they were eight of 21 for a total of about 38 yards. So it didn't move the ball really well passing it, attempted a lot of passes. Penalty-wise for the Clippers, they had uh, 30 yards of penalty in that second half, some holding calls and an illegal block. Then they had 10 yards in the first half, so 40 total penalty yards for the Clippers. Now we jump over to the winning team, the Imperials. Uh, leading rusher for them was going to be uh, Jake Bach, and I had 79 yards total in the game for him. They had 15 carries in the second half for 99 yards. They had 22 carries in the first half for 134 yards. So overall, 37 carries, 233 yards of offensive rushing. Like I said, Jake Bakken, 79 yards total. He had 37 yards in the second half, 42 in the first half. Then coming in, Dalton Jangla, he had... Uh, 60 yards in that first half, 11 yards only in the second half. So he slowed down a little bit in that second half, but he had 71 yards of rushing for the night. Also had uh, 32 yards of rushing for Jacob Bitts. Now for passing, they only passed twice in the second half. They were one of two for 10 yards. They were two of five for 20 yards earlier in the first half. So they're three of seven for 30 yards of passing. So passing wasn't a big thing here tonight it was all pretty much run 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 they had a they had 15 yards of penalties in each half for a total of 30 yards of penalties for the imperials imperials moved to three and one in the region four and one overall and strasburg zealand falls to zero and four in the region zero and five overall next week joe we're going to be in napoleon as the imperials will be playing host to it will be officially the south border mustangs, mustangs. which they uh they had a tough matchup tonight, I believe, a pretty decent one. It was actually versus San Stanton for tonight. So once again, that could be a very impactive region game for next week here on KSJB. That will do it for us, though, tonight. Once again, Napoleon Gackle Streeter Imperials defeat Strasburg Zealand tonight for their homecoming. For everybody, thank you to all of our sponsors. We'll see you guys next Friday. I'm Kyle Dean. And I'm Joe Jacobs. And thank you to Steve Allen. See you guys later. Bye. Good night, everyone. 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 Bye. Good night, everyone.